having to pin down the opposing team inside their own 20 to start their first drive. Great pursuit by the special teams on that last play as Mr. Miles Crawley will lead the Tigers to start this first drive. It's going to be an empty backfield set up. Three receivers to the left and two to the right. It's Crawley. Like the yeah, the man that pass will be incomplete, broken up. And well cool. covered right there by Ke- Keyshawn Johnson right there. Keyshawn Johnson gets things going early for the Panthers defense to start this ball game. We mentioned numerous times in our broadcast that we like to see this young man get things going off and early for this defense. Great coverage on that play by Mr. Keyshawn Johnson. Second and ten for the Tigers. As Carr's going to look right there, right? he has a man that pass will be caught on the far side of the field. Number 18, Jamal Franklin right there on the machine. Three-yard reception right there. So with that, we will have third down coming up for the Tigers. Third and seven to be exact. Ball's going to be spotted at the 14-yard line. As Carly's going to have two receivers on each side. As number two, Chance Williams is going to be offset to his right. As Carly's back to pass, and he's going to look right there. Right at pass will be caught past the third down backer. And he's going to have more than enough for the Tigers first down. He was able to hook up with number 19, Mr. Antonio Jones, on that last reception. Yeah, kind of did some soft coverage right there. Just sat right there in the zone where Prairie was in that and get, able to pick up that first down. Tigers going with the hurry up offense. Crawley looks like those, right? He has a man that pass. Will be caught yet again by Mr. Jones on the far side of the field. Picks up some more positive yards for the Tigers. They have a stop for getting a play right now on the side official. Might be throwing the play game. Discussing things right now. Yes, sir. And it's really a point for us. Yes, we, we do see the quarterbacks for the Panthers kind of playing in a soft coverage right now. As the cornerbacks are lined up about seven yards off the receivers. Yeah, you want to see what Alvin Falkman has in store for this defensive game plan right now, you know. They, of course, they don't want to get beat over the top of anything, so they might sag off here and there. And play. They're going to play a lot more man than anything, any SWAT team here so far. So we're going to see if they can try to make a little bit of a substitution and correction. You know, if you can, anytime you can get and get off those drives and get those three and outs, you know, they have got a good chance to win the ball game. So the Tigers will have first down past the 20 yard line. Ball is going to be spotted at the. 23-yard line as the officials were done discussing things. As the Tigers will have a first third down, Carly sends a man in motion and play action phase. He's going to throw left. The pass will be caught. And he has an open lane pass. The 30 pass the 30. He finds it to be brought down near the 35-yard line. And there's a huge game through the year on the first down for the Tigers. Yeah, a huge game right there on the screen. Play for a 25-yard reception right there. Another good call by the Grammy Tigers. All passing so far on this drive for the Tigers haven't attempted a single run play as we speak. First and ten for the Tigers. As Carl is about to pass, he has no man pass. Will be caught yet again on the near side of the field at a six-yard pickup on that play. Yes, sir, on that reception, Lennon Rash coming up. Like I said, lots, a lot of soft coverage, and the Tigers just getting to the soft spot where the Panthers at. It looks like we have a stoppage in the play. It appears that the officials are making an announcement to the marching sign of Fairview cannot play while while the other team is on offense. <laughs> <laughs> get any of take advantage of it? Any way you can, man. <laughs> Got to do it within the rules. Got to do it within the rules. Second down for the Tigers. As far as going to throw this one, pass will be caught yet again, and he's going to be brought down, but he will have enough for a first down. And it seems like the Grambling Tigers are wanting to get the ball flipped into the playmaker's hand to get that open field space and allow them to try and create something to some big plays right there and like, able to pick up the first down again. And on previous plays, they seem to be like simple hitch routes as well, you know, five yards here, four yards there. Just picking up whatever they can get. Another hitch right on that play. That pass will be caught again for another positive yards on the play. So as we see again, as the Panthers are making some substitution on defense on the front line, hitch routes is what we see so far here offensively for the Tigers. Yeah, and it looks like probably is more game plan for that run because, like I said, you have to see a run play all this first drive. So we're going to see what 
defense can do to make a quick set adjustment right here. I mentioned in the pregame show that the Tigers like to run and overstep the pass. It appears they may be doing the opposite. As they finally go to the run on that play, he has to roll up on the right side. Breaks a few tackles. He's staring the seat. Pass the 20, pass the 10. And he finally brought down inside the 10-yard line. So I mentioned in my pregame show feel that the Tigers like to pass and those, uh, like to run and select the pass. But on this drive, they were passing the circle run. And I said, you get caught the defense sleeping right there. You know the bounce out to the outside right there. Was number three floor jump the flip the fifth right there. Yes, sir. So a huge gain on the ground for the Tigers, Mr. Floyd Chuck. And with that, the Tigers will have first and goal. Well inside Panther territory. Ball placed inside the ten yard line. They're gonna officially mark this one at the seven yard line to be exact as Carl is going to take a pass in the end zone. Pass is incomplete, but I do see some yellow laundry, Mr. Silver Prince. Yes, sir. It don't look like it's intended to the ball was thrown, so I won't see no pass interference. It looks like it might be maybe some unspoken like conduct going to get Bramlin, but we're going to see what the head official and the crew will discuss. <laughs> One of the things that we are seeing is that the Tigers are going extremely fast on offense. So they want to keep the pace So the Panthers catch a break there, Mr. Silver. Big break, man. <laughs> a big break as the Tigers were on the move here on this drive. Only one third down for the Tigers on this drive. Yeah, they were able to convert right there to keep the drive light. They've either been looking at second and short or they're picking up the first down. So right there, like I said, they caught a break right there on unsportsmanlike conduct to push them back. So let's see what the Panthers defense can hold up and trying to minimize the Tigers to at least three right now. Well, either way, you know, there's no, there's no first downs that the Tigers have to attempt. They have to score on this drive as they were inside the 10-yard line uh, before that penalty was called. As they go with a run on this play, this time he's going to be met near the line of scrimmage, only gains about three yards on the play. Jim by a host of pandas right there. Like I said, sitting on that run game, only able to pick up three yards right there. And I see number nine, Mr. Keyshawn Johnson, getting up underneath the pile on that last throw. And that's what you want to see. You want to see a leader being the one, you know, being the first one to put his hand down, you know, and and lead the team and being the one to be the first one to meet that running back. So the Panthers' defense is on – a, a looking at a bend but don't break situation right here. And the Tigers were able to drive nearly the length of the field or inside the 20-yard line of the Panthers, but we do have third and goal coming up. Carly, back to pass. He's going to exit in the end zone. That pass is going to be incomplete, nearly intercepted on that play. Great coverage by the Panthers. Yeah, Carly tried to do a good job of only putting it where his receivers had a chance of getting it, but almost put it in the hands where the, <laughs> where the Panthers could have got away with it, and, you know, it would have been a big turnaround right there, so both teams caught a break right there. You know? Yes, sir. Now they're going to bring out the field goal again and accept this 35-yard field goal. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As the snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. He was able to get that one with plenty of room to spare. Number 38, Mr. Tanner Winkle for the Tigers. And with that, the Tigers have struck first blood here in today's contest. We're on top of this one about a score of 3-0. to zero. So the Tigers were able to drive nearly the length of the field for a little. However, due to a costly penalty inside the 10-yard line, the Panthers catch a break. And as I mentioned, they were in a bend but don't break situation, and they were able to be successful uh, on that drive. No, absolutely. It's actually, if you go back to that drive, that's a win-win situation for both teams. With Grambling starting inside their own 40, drive down and still put up points on the board. And then for Kirby defense, you know, they had them all the way down at the goal line, you know, looking at second goal. Almost from out the three yard line, they was only able to give up three points. So, like I said, for win win right now, of course, a bigger win for Perry because you know, you know, you only got chasing himself, you only chasing third. Well, it appears the head coach, uh, Hugh Jackson, for the Tigers kind of came in and they kind of flip flopped uh, the game plan. You know, again, as I mentioned in my pregame show, both of these squads include. Include Grambling usually like the run in order to set up the pass. I mean, these are, you're talking about two squads that have a strong running game 
of the Rock Over Tire 2023 campaign. However, on that opening drive, we see the Grammar State Tigers, they come out firing through the air for the entire drive. They didn't attempt a running uh, a running play until they got on the opposite side of the city yard line. And then actually, you want to make pay attention to the next drive that they have. You know, as parents for the Panthers, you can't follow sleep with it. But, you know, the whole motor for them is they want to run the ball. You know, so you can't follow sleep because they're trying to pass and get some quick passes in. And then you try to drop back into cover. That's when they're just going to drop it off and run it down your throat. So you got to stick to the game plan. You know, probably you want to press them up a little bit more and not give off so much soft service. But Charlie, they're going to take those six, seven yards any time to keep the chain moving, you know. So if anything, you know, you said stick to that, add a little bit more pressure. If they're going to, like I said, if they want to throw the ball, try, let's try and, like, send a little bit more out there. Let's see what Keyshawn Johnson can try and get his nose back there in the back there. And it appears that you and you mentioned it before that the Tigers are typically just taking whatever the Panthers are giving them. You know, you talk about the soft zone that these cornerbacks are playing uh, on these uh, on these wide receivers. Again, they're playing about seven yards off of these receivers. So most of these throws were, like, hitch routes. Yes, sir. They were just wooden and they were only, like, five-yard hitch routes. And so, so the grandma basically said, well, if you're going to be playing seven yards off of me, I'm just going to run a five-yard hitch route, and I'm going to let my receiver, these are my athletic receivers that we're seeing from grandma as well. So I'm going to let my receivers who's athletic try to pick up some additional yards once they catch it a five-yard route. Yeah, and that's just doing nothing but letting the quarterback quality for grandma, you know, just get to the rhythm of things, you know, not having to force anything down the field. Like I say, it is giving the grandma's playmakers opportunities to create with the ball in open space, you know. So, like I said, let's see what the Panthers can do now and see what they can see the kind of answers. On how, the how can you respond if you're the Panthers? Yes, sir. Yes, how sir. can you respond? The Panthers, for those of you that are listening, the Panthers were in control of the ball game for the majority of the, for the, majority of the game last season. They didn't throw not a single time last season uh, against this ball club. And you find yourself in this game right here already trailing three. How are you going to respond? We have 9.51 to go here in the first quarter. As the teams have made their way onto the field, the Tigers are ready to kick this one off, moving from right to left. And Mr. Brian Jenkins is going to fill this one. He's going to get past the 10, past the 20. He has a lane. He's going to be brought down near the 30 yard line. Solid return for Mr. Brian Jenkins. And with that, the Panthers will set up their first drive here of the first quarter in this state for a classic matchup. Mr. Trey Zon Conley shots out to the field to lead his Panthers on this opening drive. And Andre, just to go back to that opening kickoff, and man, it seems like that one special team right there from Purdue, he just turned around, he ran the wrong way, because he got a, got a foot in the block, <laughs> he kind of returned that to the house. Ahmad Antoine is going to be offset to Conley's right, he actually switches to the left now. And another hand out to Ahmad Antoine, where he was met immediately at the line of scrimmage for a gain of no yards on the play. It's the 97 Lane Lewis on a nice stop for the Tigers. Yeah, and it's not like Kirby is going to stick to their, you know, their, their bread and wanting to run the ball, but they're only able to pick up one yard right there. So we're going to see what they got in store the second play. Second and nine for the Panthers. Panthers move from left to right. Empty backfield for the Panthers. Conley. At the pass, he has some time. He has a man. That pass will be caught at the 40 yard line. He was near the first down marker. He was able to hook up with Trey John Spiller. On that play, he will have enough for a Panthers first down. Yeah, Conley had a nice, nice time to throw that ball well protected right there by the offensive line by the Panthers. Ball will now be spotted at the 40-yard line. Panthers move from left to right, two receivers on each side. Amon Antoine is going to be offset to Conley's left. Conley, back to pass. He has some time. He's going to come into the pocket, and he's going to air this with a man. That pass is going to be caught. And he's still in his feet, and he's going to be brought down past the 30-yard line. He was able to pick up with Amar Antoine on that play. Yes, sir. Another nice 22-yard reception right there to keep the driver line, keep them six moving. And it appears that Conley was going to take off. When I mentioned before, last season, Conley would have took off on that play. But it never took him time, and he stayed where he was at, and he was able to hook up with Amad Antoine down the field. Another hand back to Amad Antoine. He has a lane, and he breaks the tackle. He passed the 20, passed the 10, and he's going to be brought down inside the five-yard line. Amad Antoine making a statement on this drive for the Panthers. A nice 40-yard run right there by Amad right there. Like I said, saw the lane. Nice opened up by the, by the Panthers right there. Great block in downfield. Ball will now be spotted at the three-yard line of the Tigers. Another hand out to Amon Antoine, and he will be in for a Panthers touchdown, just like 
But how do you respond? You respond back scoring the ball in two minutes if you're the Panthers. It's great, great response. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned in the pregame show that I wanted to see how well this young man, Trojan County, plays, given the fact that this will be his last game here at the State Fair Classic. But I did not mention that this will also be Amar Antoine's last game at the State Fair Classic. And he showed on that play that I am going to make my mark as well. Yeah, and like I said, it's, it's good to, like I said, for him to be back in his hometown, you know, he's got to put on a great, great show, for, you know, for the last time. You know, let's, let's, let's like build off his energy, you know. It's always a good thing where you can go like that on his first drive, put up points, answer back, you know, after your defense gave up three, you know. So let's see if his defense can go back here, you know, and, let, and let's see what they got in store. Don't want to fall asleep now, you know. <laughs> like Randall still wants to run the ball, you know, so – just like I said, the press up on the, the wide receivers and not give up, you know, those little rinky dink six, seven yards to keep those drive alive. You don't want to fall asleep, but things are now interesting here in this day for a classic. 73 is now our score in favor of the Panthers. Seven feet to go here in the first quarter. We'll take a break and come back with more Panther action right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. This broadcast has been made possible by the support of the Prairie View Athletic Club. The Prairie View Athletic Club is a proud supporter of Prairie View and University Athletics. For more information on becoming a member of the Prairie View Athletic Club, send your email to pvathletic.club at gmail.com. That email address again is pvathletic.club at gmail.com. Prairie View Athletic Club. A proud supporter of Prairie View A&M University Athletics. And welcome back to Panther Football right here in the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Andre Davis alongside Mr. Philip Prince. So the Panthers were able to answer back on their opening drive here in the first quarter on top of this one by the score of 7-3. to three. We have 7.50 to go here in the first quarter. Philip. Yes, sir. And before we get off back to this kickoff, we want to take this time to thank our sponsors, the Pro Athletic Club, the Panther Badgers, and the Temple of Refuge Ministries. And remind you, know, always go listen to the Mike Prince Show daily on the YouTube on the end at the Apple Open Mic Broadcast Network. The Mike Print Show? The Mike Print Show. <laughs> Print, one and only. The one and only Dr. Mike Print. <laughs> Does not get any better than this. As the Panthers are kicking this one off, and he's going to be filled, he's going to be spotted at the 20-yard line. He's finally going to be brought down, and the Tigers are going to have their second possession here in the first quarter. At around the 26-yard line, moving from right to left. Yeah, nice little return right there. You know, able to afford about a nice 15. Got a nice 15 yards, getting a better start from this than they were from that first drive. So, like, start from the – anytime you can start outside of your own 20, you know, you got a, a good shot, you know, moving down the field. What? You know, the best start, man. It doesn't look so far. It's going to Prairie Day. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and one of the things that's going to be interesting is this drive coming up. Like there's a penalty marker? Yes, it appears that the officials were making an announcement on that play as the teams are making their way okay, back to their respective hunters. Yes, so it appears that it's going to be a re kick offside on Purdy. Yes, so they are going to be kicking from their own 30 yard line. Hmm. And they're going to try this kick again. I wonder, that's kind of a question to call. I guess you, you like the chance of, you know, of your, your special teams man getting a better return from that. If I'm, if I'm Gomez, I'm at least going to try and kick this into the end zone so they don't, don't get any return. Because they had a, a, a great start, what, starting at their own 29? Yes, sir. You know, so I guess the gamble call right here. So instead of standing at their own five-yard line, they're now standing at their own 
10 yard line, number 13, Aaron Jackson. Back to receive this for the Tigers. The kick for the Panthers will be number 40, Rodriguez. As this kick is off, and he's going to catch it inside the 10 yard line. He's going to get past the 20, have a hole, but he's going to be met by plethora of Panthers. And it appears that we have some more pushing and shoving going on on the far side of the field. Yes, sir. The players are going all the way to the end of the whistle and then some, you know. So it's going to be a heated contest, and I, and I don't doubt it's going to ever slow down from this point on. Hey, we're just getting started. <laughs> yeah, we're just getting started, man. <laughs> we're just getting started. You're just now joining us. We have 7.38 to go here in the first quarter. Already some pushing and shoving going on. We mentioned in our pregame show a lot at stake for both of these ball clubs, Phil. Both of these teams are coming in 2-0 and in conference play. Yes, sir. I said the winner out of this contest is sitting at first right now in the West. So let's see which one come out victorious. Hopefully it's the Panthers. But check that 1-0. and uh, The Tigers are actually 1-0 in conference play. The Panthers are 2-0 in conference play. Yes, sir. So first down for the Tigers. They're going to run on first down. Gains about three yards on the play. Number two, Chance Williams on the carry for the Tigers. Second down coming up. Ball is going to be spotted at the 32-yard line. So the bench and Gremlin got the ball to start it off before they even took the, like, the same position when they took the penalty. So <laughs> it didn't work out in their favor. <laughs> so a play-action fake. As Carly is going to have time, he's still struggling. He's just going to throw this one out of bounds as he was being pressured. On that play, led by number 99, Mr. Calvin Percy, the defensive end for the Panthers. Yes, nice pursuit job right there by the Panthers. Looked like the Grambling offensive line got away with the hole because if they didn't hold him up, it looked like the Panthers would have gotten there for the first shot of the game. But luckily, they was able to throw it away and avoid, you know, any loss of down right there. So if the Panthers are going to continue to play in the soft zone coverage, then they're definitely going to get some pressure on Mr. Uh, Crowley as he's going to throw this one. This time the pass will be completed. Down the field, past the 30-yard line, he will have enough for a Tigers first down. Yeah, and like I said, another, at, another job by the Grambling Tigers, sitting in that zone, hitting the spot where the Panthers aren't at. As we have some more pushing and shoving after that last play, you don't be surprised that the officials try to get in control of this ball game as soon as possible. Close to 10 for the Tigers. This time a handoff to Mr. Chance Williams. He breaks through the middle, and he's going to be brought down. Gained some positive yards in that play by the seven-yard pickup on that carry from Mr. Chance Williams. Yeah, like I said, the Grambling Tigers now want to run that ball, you know. They, like I said, that first yard, they came out passing. So now it's like they want to stick to the more of the run now. So we're going to see what the Panthers' defense can do, you know, and try and see if they can get that Grambling number. Yeah, they came out straight passing on that on that last drive. Here on this drive, they appear to be mixing things up between the run and the pass. As they have second down coming up, second and three. As they're inside Panther territory, ball placed at about the 46-yard line. Another handoff to Mr. Chance Williams. This time he has plenty of room on the right side of the field. He's going to be brought down. Enough for a first down. We have another flag on the play. Yeah, like we said, some more pushing and shoving going down to there. You see players helmets coming off. And you see right there, uh, Grambling Tiger, uh, offensive line was, lineman was upset. You know, didn't think he'd get a call. So I think this one's going to go against the Panthers. So this time we have a personal foul charge against the Panthers on that last play. Yeah, and that's what you don't want to do if you're the Panthers already. That's your, your second penalty right there. Start off into the early in the, in the game, you know, and, and we still got a lot more ball game to play. 11 total penalties last week against Alcorn. Two penalties so far here in the first quarter as the Tigers will have a first set of downs well within Panther territory. First and 10, another handoff. This time the Chance Williams. Nothing doing on that play. He was met at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, nice job by the defense right there, by the Panthers, you know, minimizing that run right there. It like, seems like the Tigers were able to to make the right call at the right time, you know, busting out runs for almost over 15 yards so far. This time, number three, Floyd Chalk checks in as the running back for the Tigers. 
here on this next play as they will have second and 10 coming up, moving from right to left. Ball is actually spotted at the 14-yard line of the Panthers as we have stoppage in the play, a timeout on the field, charge against the Tigers. It will be their first timeout of the half, and when the teams come back, it will be second and 10 for the Tigers. Ball is going to be placed at the 14-yard line of the Panthers. So a lot of emotions we're witnessing here on this drive for both squads. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, this is going to be a, a fun matchup from the you know, point of kickoff to the end. You know, players are going to keep going to the end of the whistle, you know. So we're going to see how, you know, disciplined both teams can play throughout this whole, you know, entire day of the game, you know, because at some point you don't want to get caught up, you know, and caution the team from giving up, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct at the wrong time. You know, as I said, just like here at point that the Panthers just did, you know, they already got a big 15, 20 yard run right there. Then you add on tacking on another 15. So you got to see how the Panthers can minimize this place of smart football. Discipline is the key word that you just mentioned, Philip, and I can guarantee you that that's essentially what this timeout is right here for both squads. Both squads, I'm sure the coaches are in both huddles telling their team about being under control, being disciplined, and not giving up any costly penalties like what we've been witnessing so far here on this drive. Absolutely. You know like any time you're giving up you know, three yardage, you know, like you're just digging yourself a bigger hole. Teams have made their way back onto the field. The second and ten for the Tigers, the all plays at the 14-yard line. As Carl is going to have one receiver on each side. And he's going to try this one in the back of the end zone. The pass was incomplete. Solid coverage on that play. Number 24, Malachi Harrison on a solid coverage for the Panthers. Yeah, just ran, just ran out of real estate right there to try to keep it in bounds, man, like right there right there by the end zone. But, and, and you can tell that Carly tried to put it where only his guy can make the play. Oh, absolutely. That was a well-placed ball right there by Carly, you know, and then, like I said, the wide receiver right there tried to bring it in with one hand, but nice, tightly caught right there by the Panthers, you know, to allow him to even keep it, you know, and maintain any kind of possession. So if we have third down coming up, the Panthers are finding themselves in the same situation that we witnessed on the previous drive, a bend but don't break situation, third and ten coming up for the Tigers. The ball is going to be placed at the 14-yard line. And there's going to be another timeout taken by the Bramlin Tigers. Yes, sir. A timeout on the field, and we're going to take a timeout, and when we come back, we're going to have more Panther action. You listen to Panther football right here on the Upper Mike Broadcast Network. Today's game is brought to you by the Panther Backers, proudly serving student athletes since 1995. Scholarship and student support has been the main focal point of the Panther Backers. Through consistent support from former athletes, dedicated alumni, and fellow donors, the Panther Backers have provided scholarship funds for several young men and women athletes at Prairie A&M University for the past 26 years. For more information on how to become a member, contact Dino Robinson at 713-417-2090. That number again is 713 713-417- Two zero nine zero. You can also visit the website at www.pantherbacker.org. The Hill is where the heart is. And welcome back to Panther Football on the Upper Mike Broadcast Network. Third and 10 coming up for the Tigers. Ball plays at the 14-yard line. Empty backfield for the Tigers. As Carr is going to throw this one, a pass will be caught, but he will be short of the first down. Yeah, and let's see what the Grandma Tigers decide to do right here. It looks like it's going to be four down territory. So it looks like they're going to put the offense on the field right now. Offense will stay on the field as we have fourth and one coming up. 
And they're going to hand this one off to Chance Williams, and he's going to stretch this one to the outside. He goes out of bounds as we have multiple flags flying everywhere. Oh, this one's coming back. You know, it looks like it's going to be a holding or going yes, against sir. Bramley. Yes, sir. And, uh, again, Purdue caught a break right there because it looks like that running back right there was able to hit the outside. And, you know, can use that open speed, use his speet, just outrun and pick up the first down. But, like I said, it, it made sense to why <laughs> – He's able to get out there so fast. So now let's see what they decide to do now that they got pushed back another 10 yards. He decides to kick the field goal. It appears that he will do just that, Philip. <laughs> as the field goal will make their way onto the field as the ball is now spotted at the 16-yard line. Still about a 32-yard field goal attempt. As number 38, Mr. Tanner Rinker, is set to try his second field goal attempt for today's ball game. We do have another stoppage in the play. It appears that we may have another timeout. As we're still waiting to get the signal, the teams are making their way back to their respective hurdles. Yeah, the head official never indicated a, a, a timeout. Exactly so right. The Prairie takes advantage of any time that there's a stoppage to play, you know, to communicate any you know, last bit of assignment. As you should. <laughs> As you should. Well, of course, and that's what you want to do. You know, you already got, you know, early penalties right now. You, you don't want to do anything foolish right now to, to keep this drive alive and pick up an automatic first down. Well, the teams have made their way back onto the field. Tanner Rinker, the kicker for the Tigers, 32-yard field goal attempt. His second field goal attempt here in the first quarter. As the snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. 7-6 is now our score. Still in favor of the Panthers. 4-15 to go here in the first quarter. And we talked about penalties. I know essentially we were talking about penalties as far as the Panthers are concerned. However, penalties have become costly for both squads here so far in this first quarter. It's been costly for the Panthers, but as we just witnessed, it was costly for the Tigers. As, as you mentioned, the running back had more than enough for a Tigers first down. However, due to a holding penalty, back to about 10 yards, and instead of first and goal, they had to attempt another field goal. Yeah, both teams are sitting right now in two penalties, you know, already just into the first quarter, you know. So, like I said, if I had to be a bad man, I bet there's going to be a lot more penalties to be called here in this game. <laughs> so, like, so let's, let's, let's see what the Prairie Panthers can do, you know, to clean it up, you know. Like I said, right now you're sitting with the lead, seven to six, you know. Great defensive job by, you know, your defense. Only allow that Tiger offense, who seem like they've been able to move the ball downfield, you know, extremely well, but only been able to tackle away three points. So, he said, two big wins right now for the Prairie defense. And I have no, pro- I have no problem with Ben the Dumper. <laughs> I have no problem. The Panthers defense were in the Ben the Dumper situation. Not one, but two drives in a row. I have no problem with that. I'd rather give up three than give up six. Absolutely. <laughs> six six looks way better than three. As we have. <laughs> As there was a flag on the play with a delay of game by the kicking team. That's going to push them back five yards. They're going to re-kick this one. <laughs> well, that's a penalty on each special team right now so far. We had all sides early on the kickoff by the Panthers. Now you have the delay of game. Like, that's just a mental mistake. So you composure know. is a key thing. Composure is a key thing for either squad. You know, we talked about composure for the Panthers and being under control. But when you're talking about either squad, composure is going to be a huge thing for this ball game. As I mentioned, a lot of stake for this ball game. Again, the Panthers are two and zero in the Western Division, and the Tigers are one and zero in conference play as well. So both teams are undefeated in conference play going into this ball game, and we all know the magnitude and how important it is to uh, when you come, when you're facing an opponent in your same division to be victorious uh, in that ball game. As this kick is off, kind of wide champ is going to fill this one inside the five-yard line. He gets past the 20, and he's going to be brought down past the 30-yard line. Solid return on that play. 
by Mr. Connor Wysham. Yeah, just kids up here. It looks like he just kind of missed a wrong, wrong hole right there. He could have seemed like he could have bounced that out to the outside, you know, kind of just slipped through this. It's like he just got caught up to his own blockers right there. And this, and this is a young man that has the speed to really break one. Absolutely. Like I said, right there, you just see it right there, display right there. He kind of was a little bit on hesitant on taking it right there, but a, a big game right there to get the perfect great start at their own 32-yard line. So the Panthers will start this drive, their second drive here in the first quarter, at their own 32-yard line. Amon Antoine was the man on that first drive, and now Caleb Johnson will have his first shot at it here in this State Fair Classic. He picked up some solid yards on that last play. Yeah, it's nothing like getting your first carry out the way you're seeing positive, you know, seeing green right ahead, ahead of you. So, you know, that's the first good run right there by Johnson. So let's see if they decide to keep feeding him this guy. And this is a young man that runs angry. He <laughs> ran like he was upset on that last play. Absolutely. <laughs> Second down coming up for the Panthers. They're going to hand it off to Mr. Caleb Johnson again. And he was brought down near the first down marker, but they may give him the first down, and they will do just that. Yeah, and like I said, if anything that you can do, you can try to minimize anything second and short, second and short, you know, second and three. You know, you don't want to have to fly all the way into the playbook. It's always comfortable, you know, that you can hand it off to your back to pick up that first down, you know, instead of having to always rely on your long second down, third down. But, and they haven't really attempted the third down so far here in this ball game. The offense has moved fluidly so far in this first quarter. First and ten for the Panthers. Conley, back to pass. He has some time. He rolls to his left side, and he's still been pressure, and he's going to finally take this one. Slides down safely near the first down marker. Trades on Conley on that solid QB scramble on that play. Yeah, and you like to see that Conley slide, you know, not to, to avoid any kind of extra – Pitch right there, because anytime they see the quarterback free wheeling out there, they're going to try and take the any necessary crack out of him. Good job getting down and avoid any other necessary hit. Now, I've been mentioning before that Trazon Conley hasn't been taken off like he normally does, but make no mistake about it. <laughs> if he has to, he will do just that. This time he will hand out to Amon Antoine. He was met at the line of scrimmage by a plethora of Tigers on that play. And just to go back on that last scramble by Conley, you know, Brady is doing a nice job of protecting him, giving him time, you know, to even to extend the play out as he wanted to. He was well covered right there by the Tigers. But the Conley did a nice job. Deep this game, too, because there was nobody up there in front of him. Just take that six, seven yards that they give you, you know, to keep the play alive, you know, and let's keep the offense, the momentum flowing. Well, uh, well, the Panthers have three returning offensive linemen for the 2023 campaign, Mr. Chance Jones, Mr. Kobe Lewis, and Mr. Arrington Taylor uh, leading the way for the, for the big boys uh, down low. See right there on the last run by Johnson, kind of tripped up, but see how generous they are to be with the spot. It's like going to be enough to pick up the first down. Only needed three and got exactly three. Needed three, and we got three. Ball is now spotted inside Tiger territory. They're going to officially spot this one at the 47-yard line. First set of downs for the Panthers, first and ten. Three refuse to the right and one to the left for Conley. Conley, back to pass. He has a man that pass. Will be caught, and he will have enough for a Panthers first down. And let's see what these Panthers do. They want to get on the ball quick. You know, they like that they their substitution on the, on the on the field right now compared to Grambling. So they're already lined up and ready to go right here. The Panthers are on the move here on their second drive here in the first quarter as Conley was able to hook up with Jaquan Bloomfield on that last reception. First down, ball placed at the 35-yard line. A handoff to Ahmad Antoine. This time he has nowhere to go, and he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that time the defensive line front by Brandon was able to kind of push back the Panthers offensive line and didn't allow Antoine to get any kind of hole, kind of got pushed back to his own blockers. So nice job right there by the Grambling Tigers to allow no yardage right there on that kick. We have 30 seconds and counting to go here in the first quarter. 7-6 is our score in favor of the Panthers. Second and 10 coming up. Conley, back to pass. He has some time, and he's going to edge this one downfield. And the pass will be broken up in the end zone as bodies were flying everywhere. Yeah, you had two receivers down there. It looked like he was trying to get, you could pick your poison or who he wanted to go to. He had number six right there. Um, yeah, Jaquan Bloomfield, you and there. Deion Jones, both in the end zone, and both were caught for the ball at the same time, ran into each other, 
and they both had to go to the sideline on that last play. <laughs> but also, like, give, give credit to Conley, like, placing the ball where only his, you know, wide receivers had a chance to get to it. Because right there, you, you had three Grambling defenders over there, but still, he only got out of the hands uh, out of your two receivers that just like, lack of communication right there. And even though it wasn't a completed pass, uh, great uh, protection by this offensive line. As uh, they're going to go with a screenplay on third down, and he's still on his feet, pass for 30. Still keep moving, pushing the pile, and he should have enough for a pass his first down. And that just does my feet you up right there, man, to keep the play alive. <laughs> the play, man. Great reception right there, great call. Kind of looked like he's going up for dead right there, but he just kept those feet chugging. He might have only picked up six or five right there, but just kept those feet moving and, and bust his way to get up those extra five yards. I believe they call it yak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Number yeah. one, Stacy Brown on that huge, huge run just would not be denied on that play. And, see, and, and, and let's see if the Panthers can just feed off of that energy right now. You know, if you're the Grambling Tigers, you got to be pretty upset right there. You had them kind of backed out, you know, looking like at a third, fourth, and five right there. But if you're the Panthers, you know, you're feeding off of the energy. If he's able to, you know, sacrifice his life right there, you know, pick up extra yardage right there, that just makes me want to feed out and, you know, throw myself out there for the team. Well, that last play took us to the end of the first quarter here from the Cotton Bowl. 7-6 to six is our score in favor of the Panthers. We'll take a quick break and come back with the start of our second quarter right here live from Dallas, Texas. You listen to Panther football right here on the Yobo Mike Broadcast Network. Join us each and every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, for a word of encouragement from the Temple of Refuge Ministries. Simply dial 857-777-0000. Building the kingdom, one soul at a time. Temple of Refuge Ministries, Prairie View, Texas. A lot of action in that first quarter as the State Fair Classic from Dallas, Texas is giving you everything that you are bargaining for. Welcome back to Panda Football on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Hunter David alongside Mr. Philip Prince. Philip. Man, a lot I'm of action good, in that first man. quarter. I'm feeling good, man. <laughs> that was a great first quarter, you know, and like I said, this will be a heated contest, you know. It's not going to be any bold moments. Like I said, you felt the energy coming into the stadium, and you still feel the energy as the game is still going on. It's going to be a tight contest, and that's what you want to see. It's good football throughout this whole time. I mentioned in the pregame show that this game will not be what we saw last year. It will not be. I said it was a one-sided game. The Panthers showed their dominance throughout the course of the entire ball game. It wasn't even close. It was just something about the elements of this coming in today's game that it was not going to be what we saw last year. And that first quarter was no shortage of what we what we were doing. Well, absolutely, you know, Graham still has that bad taste in their mouth. You know, no one wants to ever get you know embarrassed like that. You know, in, in, in any given stage at that point. You know, so we're going to see how they can bounce back here. They're trailing right now by a score of seven to six. Teams have switched side. Panthers now moving from right to left. First down. A handoff to Caleb Johnson. He gains about one yard on the play. And you mentioned that the Tigers still have that bad taste in them. We're going to see if the Panthers can make it just even more bitter for them uh, here in the second quarter. As they are on the move, well within Tiger territory. Second and nine coming up. As Conley's going to have two receivers to the right and one to the left. Caleb Johnson will stay out there as the running back for the Panthers. And check that. That will actually be the sophomore running back, Mr. Connor Wysham. I've mentioned before I would like to see the young men get more action early on in the ball game. They're going to give it to him on second down. 
gains about a yard on the play. Well, and you see that the Panthers, they, they like to, you know, feed all the miles that they have in that running back committee right now. You they'll know? leave nobody yeah, starving. Yeah, nobody's going to be left starving, you know. Of course, they're going to read, the, you know, feed, go with the hot hand when it's there, but it's nice to see that you can count on any back that's in there to, you know, pick up positive yards, you know, at any given moment when the number is called. Running plays on first and second down for the Panthers. Not really a lot doing, so third down is coming up. Ball is going to be spotted at the 23-yard line. Panthers moving from right to left. Two receivers on each side for Conley. This time, Caleb Johnson will be the running back for the Panthers. Conley back to pass. He has plenty of time. Great protection. And he has a man in the end zone. That pass will be incomplete. Conley was trying to hook up with Stacey Brown in the end zone. Great coverage on that play by the Tigers. Yes, sir. Another first error right there. The holding penalty charge against the Panthers. Penalty was declined, so we will have fourth down coming up as the third row unit comes out to the field to try. It will be about a 36-yard field goal attempt. Mr. Carlos Villagomez had a walk-off 36-yard field goal last week against Alcorn to seal the deal. And he gets another shot at it here on this play. As the snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. So Carlos Villagomez just might make the list. We got plenty of time. <laughs> we still got time for it, but he just might make the list next. We will see. Well, and also, <laughs> that's a good sign to see that that groin is not bothering. He's able to knock down the fish. That was a 39-yard field goal right there. Knock that in to extend that lead right now for the Panthers. So they're showing 10 to 6. It should be. Yes, okay, yeah, 10 to 6. Is not... <laughs> <laughs> not a test, John. I know. It's not... <laughs> I'm used to a score. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm sir. used to 6. <laughs> <laughs> so 10 to 6 is our score on the the Panthers. We have 13 16 to go here in the second quarter. Got three out of that last possession. We'd like to see 6, but I will take 3. But of course, due to another penalty on the play uh, by the Panthers. The Panthers were able to settle for a three instead of an opportunity to go for six on that last play. Yeah, and so far, like so you, you know that both teams got a good scoring offense. Both teams were able to put up points on both of their drives right now. So, it's, like, at the end of the day, we're going to find out, we're going to find out which defense can hold, you know, which offense to the least amount of points so far. So, like I said, both these teams are able to drive down the field successfully and put on some points. So one of the things that we can that we can point out is that penalties have hindered both of these teams so far in the red zone from being all that they can actually be. As this kick is off, and he's going to feel this one inside the 10-yard line, but he was hit hard at the 15-yard line. Great pursuit on that play by the kicking team for the Panthers. Yeah, nice open field tackle right there. He almost slipped out of one right there, but cleanup man came through and did his job <laughs> right there. <laughs> the cleanup man. <laughs> Isn't that a song? That's a song, right? Man, it sounds like it's older than me. It sounds like it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> I believe that's a song. I know we got somebody that's listening that may be able to answer that question for us. Right? But, it. it. <laughs> but it sounds like it was a, it, that was a song back in the day. <laughs> Clean up. <laughs> Either way, the Tigers will have their first possession here in the second quarter inside the 15-yard line, first and 10. A handoff to Chance Williams. Not a lot doing on that play. Gains about a yard on that play. And you see this extra chatter still going in after, you know, the play is going on. And, you know, just about on there, <laughs> got your source, clean-up woman. <laughs> ah, <laughs> there you I, go. <laughs> I knew it clean up something. <laughs> clean-up woman. <laughs> Second and nine for the Tigers. Another hand off the chance. Williams, he's going to break a few tackles. Still on his feet. He's finally going to be brought down at the 25-yard line. Some solid yards on that play. It will be third down coming up. Yeah, and so far, Gramlin has been able to control the time of possession so far. That first quarter, they were able to hold the ball. It don't seem like it, but it says five minutes, but I'm pretty sure that's an incorrect right there. But like I said, for the most part, Gramlin has had the ball, and like here they go again, another long drive right now. Third and three coming up for the Tigers. Two receivers on each side. As Williams is going to be offset to Carly's left. (laughs) 
As Crowley sends the running back in motion, he will drop at the pass. He throws this one quickly. Pass will be caught on the far side of the field. He has plenty of room. He's going to be tripped up. Pass to 40. He will have enough for a Tigers first down. Yeah, and it looks like the Grandma's going to stick to that wide receiver, you know, wide receiver screen right there. They love getting the seating out to their playmakers. Right there, he was able to pick up um, about 18 yards on that reception. And the pass was nearly intercepted by number 20, the John Lewis. As he tried to break on it, didn't get there in time. Another throw this time is going to be called the far side of the field. Only a few yards to pick up on that play. Again, a nice pursuit job by the, the, the defense right there for the Panthers. Another screen play, but they reacted a little bit faster there. You know, it's only a mi- minus a gain of four yards right there. So one of the things that we noticed in the first quarter, the Tigers were going fairly quickly. Uh, after each play, it appears that they're kind of slowing the tempo down just a little bit here on this drive. Empty backfield for the Tigers. Three receivers to the right and two to the left for Crowley. And Crowley has nowhere to go with it. He throws this one. And they're going to rule it an incomplete pass. That should be intentional ground. I didn't, I, didn't I didn't see a receiver in the vicinity. Absolutely. <laughs> so we're going to see. They, they, they're going to say it's an incomplete pass. So I'm going to see who defended, what, what, what intended wide right receiver was over there because he just bought it out just to get rid of it. Smart play, but again, I like didn't see a receiver over there. Well, the clear is that they're not going to review that last play. Uh, they're going to call the incomplete pass. Third down coming up for the Tigers. Call it. Like the pass, that pass. It appears that it was caught near the first down back here on the far side of the field. It was great coverage with even a better catch on that play. Seems like everything you do, great defense right there, but just better offense right there. What's a contested catch? So the Tigers will have a first set of downs now in Panther territory. Ball placed at the 47 yard line. Play well, action fade. They're going to throw this to the near side of the field. Pass will be caught. He has plenty of room. He passed the 30. Goes down the sideline, and he's going to be brought down at about the 23 yard line. And, and give credit right there to the wide receiver for Graham and on the outside, holding it and maintaining his block cleanly without getting flagged for a hold. So the Tigers are going to try to hurry up and get another play in, but the Panthers have called timeout to try to slow the momentum down for the Tigers as they are on the move now well within Panther territory. And when the teams come back, the ball will be started at the 23-yard line of the Panthers. And we are going to take a time out, and we're going to come back with more Panther action right here at the Yellow Mike Broadcast Network. This broadcast is being made possible by the support of the Prairie View Athletic Club. The Prairie View Athletic Club is a proud supporter of Prairie View a University Athletics. For more information on becoming a member of the Prairie View Athletic Club, send your email to pvathletic.club at gmail.com. That email address again is pvathletic.club at gmail.com. Prairie View Athletic Club, a proud supporter of Prairie View a University Athletics. And welcome back to Panther Football right here on the Upper Mike Broadcast Network. Andre Davis alongside Mr. Philip Prince. A lot of action so far here in this first half. We have 10.06 to go here in the second quarter. And the six is our score in favor of the Panthers. But the Tigers are on the move here on their drive here, Philip. Yeah, as I said, a lot of action. Like they said, to go back to the spread, you know, they said it was over under 60 points. So it's going to be a lot of offense. In this ball game, like they so far have displayed it so far in this contest. The number one and number two rushing attacks are displaying here 
in this state for a classic. Well, however, the Tigers are mixing things up through the air and on the ground so far here in this ball game. As teams have made their way back onto the field, it's going to be first and ten for the Tigers. Ball is going to be placed at the 23-yard line of the Panthers. Tigers moving left to right. That's Farley. He's going to draw back the pass. He has a man. That pass will be incomplete, broken up at the last minute. As Farley was nearly able to stick that one in double coverage. However, he was not able to hang on to it as he was able to try. He was trying to hook up with number 17, Tylon Williams, on that play. Yeah, and we can thank the Brown right there from helping out the first few defenders. It looked like he was able to maintain it, but. But like I said, well covered right there by the Panthers, you know, to minus anything of that being another touchdown. Second and ten coming up this time. They're going to hand it off to Floyd Chalk. He's not going to have anything doing. And our man leading that charge southern than Keyshawn Johnson. Yes, sir. Keyshawn Johnson on the great pursuit on that play as he was able to follow Mr. Floyd Chalk all the way to the sideline. <laughs> So he was able to pick up two yards on that play. So we have a huge third down coming up, third and eight. As the ball is going to be spotted at the 21-yard line. As Carly is going to have three receivers to the left and one to the right. As Floyd Chalk is going to be offset to his right. Carly, back to pass. You've been pressure, and that pass will be broken up by the defensive end, number 99, Calvin Presley. And what a job right there by, you know, Calvin, you know, timing it perfectly, you know. And, and like I said, to stop that drive, so like said, again, it looked like the Grambling Tigers were moving down the field, but it seems like they've been unsuccessfully, you know, to put more than three points on the board. So the Panthers' defense holds yet again inside the red zone as the field goal unit is onto the field to attempt a 36-yard field goal attempt. As the snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. So three for three on the night for Mr. Tanner Rinker. Ten to nine is now our score. Still in favor of the Panthers. Panther defense holding yet again inside the red zone. We have 9 or 5 to go here in the second quarter. We'll take a break and come back with more action right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. <laughs> Today's game is brought to you by the Panther Backers, proudly serving student athletes since 1995. Scholarship and student support has been the main focal point of the Panther Backers. Through consistent support from former athletes, dedicated alumni, and fellow donors, the Panther Backers have provided scholarship funds for several young men and women athletes at Prairie View and m University for the past 26 years. For more information on how to become a member, contact Dino Robinson at 713-417-2090. That number again is 713 713-417- 2090. You can also visit their website at www.pantherbacker.org. The Hill is where the heart is. The 98th Annual State Fair Classic coming to you live from Dallas, Texas. Andre Davis alongside Mr. Philip Prince. Welcome back to Panther Football right here on the Yellow Mike Broadcast Network. A lot of action from both squads so far here in the first half. The Panthers' defense showing their willpower when needed so far here in the dark. Yeah, right there. Anytime you can... 
the cold, you know, uh, offense that seems like they're moving along down the field willingly and only allowing them to three points, I said that's a win in our book, you know. So, sure. You know, like I said, now you just got to put score more points in them, you know. And just, like I said, keep feeding off that momentum that seems like that probably has established early in the ball game. They want to give you some quick scoring updates throughout the SWAC right now. Of course, in this contest, probably leading by a score of 10 to 9. We'll have to get those scores here in just a little sec as we resume back in the play. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, it was a score kick by the Tigers as we were able to fill this one at the 30-yard line, so the Panthers were able to set up I mean, to set up shop with excellent field position to start this drive. We got 9-on-1 to go here in the second quarter. 10-9 to is our score in favor of the Panthers. Panthers are showing spots offensively and defensively so far here in this ball game. Another penalty. He's going to go against Bramley. And again, he's scoring up a popcorn. is on top by a score of 17 to 13 over Alabama State with seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Florida A&M is up over Mississippi Valley State by a score of 10 to 7 with four minutes to go into the second. Alabama A&M was, was victorious over Tuskegee by a score of 58 to 3. Texas Southern was, was victorious over Lincoln by a score of 52 to 7. And Southern beat uh, – Arkansas Pine Bluff, I scored 27 to 0. Thank you, Mr. Fuller Prince. The Panthers will have a fresh set of downs to start this drive at the 35 yard line, first and 10. As they go with a handoff to Ahmad Antoine, he gains two yards on the play. Seems like he's only able like, to only pick up a small gain right there, you know. Let's see what the balance attack right now is going to be in store for the Panthers on this drive. And it may take a mile in one just a little, a little bit to get one, but we haven't really seen him since the first drive of the first quarter. You know, the Panthers are trying to spread the love, as you mentioned before, between these running backs. And they're going to go with a mile in one again on second down. Gains a few yards. We have another flag on the play. Hopefully, said this is not going back again to the Purdy Panthers. Let that nice little look gain it to, to make it a, a third and a manageable the third and short game. And then once again, look at that, another holding going against the Panthers, and that's their fourth penalty in, the, in this game so far. So even though the Panthers are leading this ball game only by one point, 10 to 9, the big Zach penalties have definitely been the theme for this first half. Not just for the Panthers, although the Panthers are, they do have the ball on this drive, and they did just uh, commit that, uh, that particular penalty, but both squads so far here in this first half, penalties have definitely been the theme so far here in this ball game. <laughs> like I said, if you're a Prairie fan, you know how undisciplined you've been all year. You just be thankful <laughs> right now that Grandma's is being just as undisciplined, you know, so far in this contest right with you. <laughs> <laughs> so second and 20 for the Panthers now. Uh, this pass is going to be called on the near side of the field, and he picks up a few yards, a few general yards on the play. Just to make it third and manageable now. Now you look at that third and 14. Third and 14. Depends on what the Panthers draw up here on this play. There's not a lot in the playbook for third and third and 14 and beyond. Uh, unless you they try to take any shots down field, you know, like I say, the Scrambling Tigers have done a nice job of locking that up. But, you know, let's see, like you say, if they try to do a lot of more conservative cards and hand the ball off and just, you know, see how they want to do this. Well, they have to get to the 45-yard line for a first down as Conley fan pressure, and he will be brought down in the backfield for a sack by number 95, Mr. Javon Carter, on that play. And you can see why Conley's a little frustrated right there coming off of that, of that last play, not on the same page. With his wide receiver, it's kind of wish that some of them would at least just sit still in the zone instead of just running their whole complete route because it was well covered right there by the Tigers. But like I said, Conley ran out of time, real estate, to keep the play alive right there. But the punting units are on the field to kick this off. And from Jasso, back to punt this for the Panthers as it takes a nice Tiger bounce and it's going to officially be spotted at the 
47-yard line, and that's where the Tigers will have their next possession here in the second quarter, moving from left to right. And, and to go back to uh, what Kugel's played again, they were third and 14, and to your point, it appears that Conley was a bit frustrated as the wide receivers appeared to try to, you know, extend their routes, and ultimately in their minds, they were trying to get the first down. So it just goes to show you that there was some miscommunication in terms of what that particular play was supposed to be. It appears that Conley was trying to get it to him quickly and hopefully see if they can use their legs and try to pick up additional yards to get the first down. Yeah, and like I said, you see that he tried to right there, you know, couldn't, just like I said, just ran out of time right there as he got pursued real quick. And like I said, we've been mentioning all day that the Panthers offensive line has did a nice job of protecting Conley, you know, to allow him, you know, to, to extend those plays out with his legs, you know. But like I said, just right there, just, just ran out of time, you know, and Believe it or not, you said that was the first punt in this today's contest, you know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we have a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout, and when we come back, the Tigers will have a fresh set of downs here in the second quarter. Ball is going to be spotted at their own 48-yard line, moving from left to right. You listen to Panther Football right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We certainly hope that you're enjoying our live coverage of Panther football right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. While we have a break in the action, we want to ask all of our listeners, have you been thrilled with the content and sports coverages provided to you here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network? If so, we want to take this opportunity to let you know for as little as 17 cents a day. Yes, you heard it correctly. For just 17 cents a day, you can become a listening partner right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. To do so, all you have to do is head to our website at obnradio.com. Again, that's obnradio.com. And fill out the inquiry form at the bottom of the page, and your monthly contributions will help us continue bringing you live and delayed sports coverages throughout Waller County and beyond. And again, it's only on the Open Mic Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. And welcome back to Panther Football right here on the Upper Mike Broadcast Network. Andre Davis alongside Mr. Philip Prince. 6.38 to go here in the second quarter. 10-9 is our score in favor of the Panthers as the Tigers will have the first set of downs moving from left to right. And the handoff to the running back, Mr. Chance Williams. He breaks through the middle, past the 50-yard line. He's finally going to be brought down inside Panther territory. Solid pickup on that play. Yeah, so far, like I said, the Gremlin Tigers have been able to control most of this clock so far in this first half right now. Like I said, let's go see if they can put up another long drive right here to put up and try and take their first lead. We'll see if they will lead back. But let's see, let's see if the Panthers are well-conditioned and got enough energy to restrain these long drives. You know, let's see, let's see if they can try and get their first stop and not allow Gremlin to put any more points on the board. Second and three coming up for the Tigers. As we have a flag on the play, it appears to be some movement. They have moved too early by the offense. And we will have just that. <laughs> yeah, that's Grandma's fifth penalty right there already. So, like I said, a lot of the teams. teams are both teams. <laughs> it's a team for both. So, you know, normally you know, in, the course of the, in the course of the game, you know, we usually may say, you know, the penalties may be one-sided. You know, we may say, you know, the penalties are affected one team over the other, but I can I honestly can't say that the penalties have affected one team over the other. Yeah, and like I said, to, to the benefit of the doubt, you know, you're glad that at least both of them are being undisciplined at this point, not just one-sided. So a play action fake on second down, and he will hook up with a man on the far side of the field. He will have enough for a Tigers first down, as he was able to hook up with number 19, it's Antonio Jones. 
for that first down reception. And Jones has been his go-to guy so far this contest. And just being, it's like I said, smart. He's sitting in that zone where the Panthers are sitting in and just sitting right there at the first down marker. Crowd is coming alive here inside the Cosmo as we attend the nine as our score in favor of the Panthers, but the Tigers are on the move. First down. And another handoff to Mr. Chance Williams, and he's going to run out of bounds on the near side of the field. Check that far side of the field, but he will. It appears that he doesn't have enough for a Tigers first down, and he ran out of bounds by three yards short. Yes, sir. Not like that clock will continue to roll down, 450 now remaining here. And we will have second and two coming up. Bar now spotted at the 33-yard line of the Panthers. Do you see to the right and one to the left for Crowley? Play action fake, and Crowley has a man, and that pass is incomplete, broken up. Great yep. defensive job right there by kind of both by the corners and the defensive yep. line getting there to blow that play up. Malachi Harrison on another solid coverage for the Panthers. They've been trying him. Oh, okay. That's in this ball game. Okay. Malachi Harrison has been standing his ground so far in that secondary. And with that, we have third and two coming up for the Tigers. And don't be surprised if it's four down to- territory for the Grambling Tigers. We'll see you to the right and one to the left for Carly. This time they're going to safely hand it off to Chance Williams. He will have enough for the Tigers first down. And he's going to be brought down at the 25-yard line. Panthers almost was able to top tackle him right there before he even broke it off and picking him any more extra yards right there. Just flipped through his way and been able to pick up seven yards right there. Substitution for the defensive line for the Panthers. It appears that they were trying to that they were in the pass on that last play. Uh, Chance Williams had plenty of room to work with on that third down play. First and ten for the Tigers. Ball plays at the 25-yard line of the Panthers. Another handoff this time for Floyd Chalk. And he picks up some solid yards. He took about three yards on the play. He said, nice job. You can tell that both offensive lines are doing a great job of allowing those, you know, their running backs to pick the right hole at the right time, you know. Like right there, that game was only for about three yards right there. But anything that's better than moving up instead of going back. Well, make no mistake about it. The Tigers have had no problem entering the road zone so far here in this ball game. Just haven't been able to put six points on the board. Will they be able to do it here on this drive as the second quarter starting to wind down? We have 318 to go. Second down coming up. Another handoff to Mr. Floyd Charles. He gets past the 20-yard line, and he's going to be brought down near the first down marker, and he will have enough for a Tigers first down. And get credit to Mr. Chalk right there. I know the viewers can't see right there, but he did a nice cutback inside move right there to, you know, to avoid the corners right there of the Kirby Panthers. And it looks like he would have only maybe picked up two yards right there, but that move was able to get him up for the first down. Nice vision on that play by Mr. Floyd Chalk. Ball now spotted at the 15-yard line. Tigers on the move. First and 10. Two receivers to the right and one to the left from Mr. Miles Crawley. A handoff to Chance Williams. This time he was met by a plethora of Panthers in the basket. He was going to lose about a yard on the play. Yes, sir. Getting in there first in charge was number 91, Derek Gray. Junior. And it was capped off by number 99, Calvin Presley, the transfer from Villanova. As we're going to have second and 11 coming up, ball's going to be spotted now at the 16-yard line. Clock continues to move here. Late in the second quarter, we have 209 and counting remaining. And let's see what they decide to do. Grandma's sitting with one timeout. PB has two. Another handoff to the running back, Chance Williams. He's going to try to swing this one around the corner. And he's going to be brought down, picks up a few yards on the play. Now, if I'm present, I'm calling a timeout right here, just trying to give yourself some time. But you're looking at a third down. Because either, either way, we know that the Tigers are likely going to walk away with at least three points. <laughs> yes, sir. They want at least trying to save some points on the board for you. Well, either way, if the Panthers don't have an opportunity to put additional points on the board here late in the second quarter, they will get the ball to start the third quarter for this ball game, as we're going to have third down coming up. Third and seven for the Tigers. Ball plays at the 13-yard line. Look, there's going to be a timeout called by Grambling, and they're going to take their last timeout. Yes, sir. They're going to take their last timeout, and we're going to keep it right here. Ten to nine is our score. In favor of the Panthers, the, the Tigers find themselves in the red zone yet again, trying to put up more than three points 
on the scoreboard here late in the second quarter. And then again, I, I guess like I said, to lead to what I was saying earlier, I would have called the timeout early. They burned off 20 seconds right there. But again, another drive where the, let's see if the Panthers can just you know only give up three points. Now, yes, sir. Now that timeout could come in handy after this last play. We have third down coming up when the teams return. If the Tigers are not able to convert on this third down, you could call a timeout after that play, especially if they decide to bring the, uh, the four-row unit onto the field. And, and let's see what Hugh Jackson has in sort of. Let, let's see, does he decide to run the ball to keep that clock going, or does he take a couple of shots into the end zone? Right now, you like you got a pretty automatic kicker right now. He's been successful three times out of three attempts so far. So and if, yeah, exactly. And if you and if you decide to kick the field goal, which more than likely Hugh Jackson uh, should do that because. Uh, if he don't get this, if he don't get this first down, I mean, the three points will put your head in his ball. Yeah, so you're looking at a third and eight. You know, ball is at the Purdy Panthers, you know, 12 yard line. It's a little early. You know, Grambling seem like they've been able to move down the field with no problem at all. But regardless if it's a second down and long, third down and short, they've been able to execute so far. So to be honest, I can't wait to see what their efficiency is for third downs coming up since we get to halftime. And and it appears that. The, the the passing attack, even though we haven't seen a lot of it since that opening drive of the first quarter, but the people that the passing attack of the Tigers may have the Panthers a little shook defensively. And I say that because it appears that everybody's kind of playing back. You know, you don't really see a lot of people, a lot of guys in the box. They seem to kind of have things just a little bit more spread out. You still have the cornerback playing about seven yards off, uh, off of the wide receivers. We talked about Malachi Harrison, who's playing about seven yards off of his guy, and they've been trying him so far here in this first half, but he's been kind of staying his ground. But it appears that the Panthers are kind of playing just a little bit more spread out, so therefore these running backs are having a lot of these, a lot of creases and a lot of holes to run through. Yeah, and like I said, you want to, you want to you gotta kind of pick your poison. Do you want to get beat downfield or do you want to get beat <laughs> down the throat? You know, and it seems like right now the Panthers haven't been able to really get figure out the grab and tiger so far. You know, but a little bit, the score will kind of tell you differently. You know, well, let's see if they, can, if they got one more stop in this, in this drive. With a huge third down coming up, as teams make their way back onto the field, third and seven coming up. As Clark's going to have two receivers to the left and one to the right. He will drop back the pass. He's going to add this in the end zone. He has a wide open man and caught for a Tigers touchdown. He was able to hook up with number 10, Lyndon Rash, who was standing in the end zone all by himself. Great play call right there, you know. It looks like, like I said, the, bull, the Panthers are sitting into another zone, and there was nobody in that flat area over there. And like I said, probably the nearest Panther defenders maybe five yards away, <laughs> you know. And like I said, this wide open clear from four yard touchdown to, to add on to the lead now. The zone is something that the Panthers have been playing for about the majority of this 2023 campaign. They've been playing it so far here in this ball game. And any time they decide to drive back the pass, Miles Crowley has just been finding, just picking his spots inside the zone of the Panthers' defense. As that uh, kick is good, so the Tigers now take the lead yet again here in this ball game, 16 to 10. Is now our score. We have 118 to go here late in the second quarter. Still plenty of time for the Panthers to try to put additional points on the scoreboard to end the second quarter. As I mentioned before, the Panthers will get the ball to start the third quarter here in this ball game, but they have 118 to go here, and I believe they have two timeouts yeah, remaining. So got two yeah, timeouts. two timeouts remaining. You got 118 to go here in the second quarter. So we're going to see the Purdy Panthers actually. I, I, I would assume that they're going to pick up the pace this next drive that they have. If anything, you don't want to give the ball back to Graham with any amount of time left, but you still got two timeouts in your pocket. Let's see if we can drive down the field. It's efficient time because you're trying to pull out your best team in offense. And at least let's get away with three instead of, you know, with no points. At least, like I said, the good thing you have to get the ball to open up the second half. So good. let's see if we can build some good momentum going into halftime. And the good thing is the Panthers have the characteristics of going fast. You know, they have so far that we've seen in the 2023 campaign, they have the ability to go slow. They have the ability to go fast. So 
obviously with 118 to go, you have two timeouts. Uh, it all depends on how they kind of work it offensively. Well, absolutely. Like I said, to look at their first drive, they was able to execute the score within two minutes. You know, when <laughs> they first started. So, you and know, it was essentially out of my interest. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was 80% of that offense on that particular drive. Uh, the Tigers are going to kick this one off. Kind of right, Sham is going to feel this one inside the five-yard line. He's going to get past the 10. Then the seat past the 20, past the 30. Makes a cut. Past the 40, and he's going to be brought down around the 40 yard line. Probably going to have a mark probably at the 37, but I was going to go on the 40. Yeah, I was kind of begging <laughs> for a little late hit to add on some extra 15 yards. But these I thought you were saying it was a flag. I don't see the flag. I was, I was, I was, I was warning you, you know, another, you know, they've been playing on this one all day, you know, but it seems like. The officials are going to let them play at, at the certain times right there because they kind of got away with a late hit, in my opinion. But we'll see. Like, no no call. So no call. We're going to see they're <laughs> going to get this starting at their own 38-yard line. At their own 38-yard line. Now we're 109 to go here late in the second quarter. Excellent field position to start this drive. First and 10 for the Panthers. Three shoes to the left and one to the right. Conley, back to pass. He has a man that passes caught at the 50-yard line. And he's still on the seat, going to be brought down inside Tiger territory. A huge gain in the first down for the Panthers. He stays in bounds. Clark continues to move here with 102 to go. And the Panthers are going to go quickly. A handoff to, oh, no, play action say He has a man downfield, and the pass will be caught. Pass the 10 yard line. Now you take your time to do the Panthers. The clock is going to stop with the first to go out of the the change to move down the field with 53 seconds. Now you're in great field position to take your time, and now I look like Panthers are going to take a timeout. Well, we have an injured, well, we, it appears that we have an injured Tiger on the field, so we're going to attend to those young guys. I'm the frustration, man. We're <laughs> moving down there excellent, you know. Trayvon Conley was able to hook up with Trey John Spiller, one of his favorite targets for this 2023 campaign. Huge play through the air, and the Panthers will have this ball inside the 10-yard line of the Tigers. You mentioned in the, on, the, uh, on their opening drive in the first quarter, they were able to drive down to two minutes. I think they just broke that time. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're both sitting here, Shot, and it was a nice play call right there to sit, just to set up with the play action, and there was nobody in route. You know, maybe could have been a better pass. If you let him a little bit, he might be saying that's six right there for the Panthers, but still we're sitting in great position right now. In, in the red zone, inside the 10-yard line to be officially spotted at the 7. So now I want to see them take their time. You still got those two timeouts in your pocket. Probably take a couple of shots towards the end zone to protect the ball at all costs. And it appears that the injured Tiger was number 96, Mr. Marquis Sykes. It appears that he was able to walk off on his own power, so he appears to be okay. Teams have made their way onto the field. First and goal for the Panthers. A handoff to, oh no, a fake handoff, and Trayvon Collins is able to keep it himself. He's going to get inside the five yard line before he's brought down. Read option on that play. As Conley had myself here in the, in the booth, was able to keep it himself. Second and goal coming up. This time he will hand it off to Cable Johnson, but the Tigers were ready for him as he was met at the line of scrimmage. Oh, and, no, no, yes, sir. And it appears that the Panthers are going to do just that. They're going to burn a timeout after that last play. You now that's going to set up a third and goal now for the Panthers. So now what do you do? Third and goal. You still have 25 seconds to go. You got you know, to go until the end, though. And and still have, you still have one more timeout. Yes, sir. You still I, have one more timeout. I would have liked to see if they called the timeout after the Conley run right there. Well, they didn't have to because it was an injury timeout. No, no, no. To look back, it was uh, to go back right there. The, 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 the previous one. Yeah, I got it. I got it. They called the timeout because you, you burned off just 20 seconds right there just to get into that play, and then that, that last play only got you a yard right there. And now I would have liked to take things back. Looking at a second and goal with one timeout, 40 seconds left. But now you're looking at a third and goal with 25 seconds left. Right. And they went with the same play, two plays in a row. The read option, Conley kept it the first time. And then the second time, he handed off to Caleb Johnson. So teams have made their way onto the field. Third and goal coming to our ball place at the five-yard line. Two receivers on each side for Conley. Conley, back to pass. He has time. He's been pressured. 
And he's going to throw a whoop in the back of the end zone. Incomplete. As we have some frustration by the wide receiver of the Panthers. It appears they may have been expecting the pass in the Ferris car. But I do not see a flag on the play. So we have first and goal coming up. The only bad thing you can look at that play right there by Conley. Conley had his eyes glued on one wide receiver right there. Probably missed. The inside slot receiver was that number zero. So Carlos Carlos, Jenkins. Yes, sir. And he was one of the he was one of the ones that was frustrated. Yes, sir. But Carlos did a go, man. Set to attempt the twenty two yard field goal attempt and it is no good. Wow. No good. And I talked about in my pregame show the inconsistency of Carlos Villa Gomez. He makes some field goals that are that are really great, and then he misses some that are kind of a hand scratcher. A twenty-two kind of yard, <laughs> kind of man. a twenty-two after making a thirty-yard field goal attempt previously, a twenty-two-yard field goal attempt was not able to get that one. And, and, and that's just that's just bitter right there for the Panthers right there to drive down the field in less than a minute and not cross the road with any points. You know, like that's just a bit frustrating right there. You know, so now. The Bramlin Tigers going to take a knee down and just go ahead and go into halftime with the lead right now. So a lot of action here in this first half, as we are now at halftime here in the 98th annual State Fair Classic. A lot of action. The Bramlin Tigers were able to get on top of this one at the end of the second quarter by the score of 16 to 10. We are at halftime. Stick around. We have a lot more in store for you here from the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, it's been a great contest, man. You know, so and it, and that's all that's all we hope for. Another good second half of football, and I'm just really excited for it to come back already. I'm excited. You're excited. I know PB Nation is excited. The Tigers on top of this one so far got a score of 16 to 10. We'll take a break and we'll come back with our halftime analysis and the start of the third quarter right here at the Yellow Mike Broadcast Network. Alabama A&M won over Tuskegee by score, 58 to 3. 
Florida A&M is leading by score 17 to 7 over Mississippi State Valley with two minutes to go in the third quarter. And of course, in this contest, Purdy's trailing by a score of 10 and 16 with 9-14 to go. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And we also want to remind all of our listeners that they can join us for next week's game as the Panthers will return home for Blackshear Field to take on Mississippi Valley State. Kick off for that game is scheduled for 6 p.m. and we'll be coming at you with our pregame show at 5.30 p.m. right here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. As the team makes their way back onto the field, a handoff to Chance Williams. And he's going to gain a couple times of yards on the play. It will be third down coming up for the Tigers. And the good Panthers, you, know, you want to you take that time. The next, if you're just able to get them out this drive, you want to talk to those who, you know, still play different place for We don't need to give up any more extra yards after any play. Help them out and dig our hole even deeper than, than what it needs to be. And one of the things I'm going to be looking at that I'm actually noticing right now is the body language of the Panthers on the sideline. One, I'm paying attention to you. You know how they're going to be reacting here in this ball game. As another hand off to Chance Williams, he will have enough for a first down. Another flag on the play. <laughs> we want to see what this penalty will be. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing the body language of the Panthers. You know, the players that they, you know, I don't want to speak too soon, but you know, I'm looking for you know someone to kind of step up and kind of get everybody pumped up and just let them know, well, hey, you know, we're only down by six. So, so two penalties on that play against both squads that they're going to offset each other. So we will repeat third down. Yeah, and to look back to what you said, you, you, you want to see some guys bring the energy up, apart from for the Panthers. Hey, there's still a lot of time left in this game. Third and four coming up for the Tigers. Two receivers to the left and one to the right for Crowley. Ball placed at the 46-yard line. Crowley's going to tip a pass downfield, and that pass will be incomplete, broken up. So like by number six, Ahmad Robinson right yes, there. Yes, sir. Ahmad Robinson on that solid coverage for the Panthers. Ahmad Robinson and Malachi Harrison have been the top cornerbacks so far here in this ball game for the Panthers. Get things done. They've been trying both of these guys in one-on-one coverages, but so far they've been able to hold their ground. It's a nine-one on the deep ball, you know, and that's a lot of trust. You know that your coach can rely on you to trust, you know, hang on to the one-on-one man's coverage downfield, and you are out for going to head up to the park. So fourth down coming up, turning units onto the field. Brian Jenkins standing at the 10-yard line for the Panthers. And he's just going to let this one take a bounce. And it will be spotted inside the 20-yard line. They're going to officially spot this one at the 17-yard line. And that's where the Panthers will set up shop here in the third quarter. So, Defensively, the Panthers are getting the job done so far here in the third quarter. We're going to see if the Panthers offensively can match that same level of our energy. And I'm looking down at the sideline. Keyshawn Johnson is trying to get this team, you know, back and forth. Just yes, like sir. here, it seems like the Panthers probably could have blocked that last pick, that, that last cover. It looks like they were just looking at him, punting. And Keyshawn Johnson just got into his teammates right there. He <laughs> keeps on playing, man, you know. So that could have been a big turn point for the Panthers right there. So instead of they're going to have a great field position. They're starting here at their own 18, 17-yard line. Yes, sir. A handoff to Caleb Johnson. Picks up some positive yards on the play. Gained a full yard on the play. He was able to get past the 20-yard line. The ball officially is going to be spotted at the 21-yard line. And to your point, you know, Keyshawn Johnson is letting guys know that, hey, even though we're down, you know, they're not showing us anything right now. That, that would make us believe that this ball game is over. Yeah, there's <laughs> a lot of time, man, and that could have been a quick turning of you know, both sides, you know. Probably could have blocked it and returned it in for six. And then you got the crowd back into it, your team's in a time, you know. So you just want to see your teammate give out everything as long as it might, right, as long, right by your side while you're doing it. And we have a stoppage in the play, a timeout on the field, a charge against the Panthers. So when the teams return, the Panthers are going to have second and six. 
Flag going to be spotted at the 21-yard line. And to your point, you know, you mentioned the crowd. You know, one thing I've been noticing is that, you know, we haven't really just seen much noise coming from the crowd so far. It kind of appears that they may just kind of be, you know, sitting on the edge of their seats, kind of in a, you know, kind of having an anticipation of the school. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's been a bit of good time. You no know, one so has a little ran away with it. You know, it's been a lot of back and forth going on. So now that, like, so we're looking at, a, a second and six right now for the Panthers. Right there, that last play, yeah, I feel like they burned an early, early timeout. You know, they were fighting for the lower game right there, so Bubba Mumbai had to hurry down there and have a timeout. And, and that's the stuff right there that you don't want to see. Mental mistakes, mental errors, you know, sort of a pause where we either got to burn an early timeout that we could have used hold on. Yeah, sure. Or, you know, again, you know, pushing those back five yards. You know. So we're going to see how they can come out after that timeout here with the second. Well, Panthers were not able to cross the 50 yard line. A previous possession. See if they can do it here, second and six. They have to fake. And as he has a man downfield pass, will be crossed. Field to see. He's past midfield. Pass the 40, pass the 30. He's going to be brought down at the 25 yard line. Jay John Spiller. And another huge game through the air for the Panthers. I mentioned that we had heard from Chase on Spiller so far in this third quarter. Chase on Connor was able to hook up with him for a huge game through the air. And with that, they are in Tiger territory. This is a huge 54 yard game right there. And the Panthers are going to try to go fast here. Conley's looking to the sideline. He's going to have two receivers to the left and one to the right. The Panthers are on the move here. In the third quarter, ball plays at the 25-yard line. Uh, play action fade, and he has a man that passes incomplete. He's trying to hook up with Stacey Brown in the end zone. And the point that the Panthers, not only play action fake, they're going with the read option play action fake. Yeah, and just right there, you saw that Conley tried to absorb the hit right there, but he just ran out of time right there. That was, that was number nine, got it back to it. Mr. Anderson to blow that play up. And if you want to come out victorious in this game, if you're calling, you just might have to stay in and take those hits. And they go with another play action fake. Same play in a row. And it appears that it will be incomplete. He's trying to hook up with Stacey Brown. Yes, again, Panthers went with the exact same play in a row. Read option fake to Amon Antoine. Trades on Conley trying to hook up with Stacey Brown. Incompletion. And Bubba McDowell down there, Tom Young Tate with the side of the Thought that there should have been a pass in the right there on that play. There's a, lot of, a lot of hands on that play. A lot, a lot of hands moving. Yeah, and I can't say, but the officials are letting you some man play out here. You know, so we're going to see how far they're going to let him go. So the ball is spotted at the 35 yard line. That third is coming up. Do you see to the left and one to the right for Tom? Obviously, it's a blue field in motion. Tom, like pass, the other man, that pass will be incomplete. Trying to hook up with the Clown Bloomfield. It doesn't appear that it was a bad ball. The Clown Bloomfield was trying to bring it in with one hand, wasn't able to do it. So we have fourth down coming up. So the ball is spotted right where it once was on their first drive, and they decide to go for it at the 35 yard line. But this time on fourth down, Carlos Villagosa is out onto the field. Yeah, and maybe seems like Tony had too much heat on that last ball, cut it with the other side of the side. You got to just pull him on the end. I'm able to pick up the ball. So, 42 yard field goal attempt by Mr. Carlos Villa Gomez. As the snap is down, and the kick is good. And just to testify <laughs> that, um, I promise you, Andre, I would have said instead of going on the I would have at least tried to the field goal. And at least you <laughs> give yourself a, a shot. Because you're either going to get the ball in the spot or you're going to get the you know, <laughs> Nevertheless, the, the Panthers come out with different points on their this third, third drive to cut that lead down. So now it's only 12 by 4, 16 to 13. Kicking away at the lead is what the Panthers are doing. 13 to 15 by 4, 4 in favor of. The Tigers and Panthers were able to put three forward on that last play. We'll take a shot and we'll come back and go back to the broadcast.
Yeah, yeah, for the club. to start this job. As the Panthers are going to be kicked, as the Panthers are going to be kicked, right, we kick to go here in the third quarter. It's going to be scored in. He's brought down by the third quarter. On great pursuit there for the kicker team for that. It's a great pursuit right there by number 37. Right there, making open field passes right So the Panthers defense will now have enough here to start this drive. Get another 15 right any point so far in stopping that grandma's offense. So, and this one, for you, uh, right there in 20 yard line. Well, they start at 14 yard line. Exactly. We're going to go with a jet sweep. And he has plenty of room past the 30. And he's going to be brought down past the 40 yard line. A huge gain in the first down for the Titans. Yeah, it would have picked up 20 yards. Right there. <laughs> uh, so, big, uh, big flag shows what the Grambling Tigers with that off that rope. So I said jet sweep. It was actually a double jet sweep on that play. 25 yards in. First down for the Tigers. Ball in that spot is 40 yards. This is on the 42 yard line. Play action stage. This pass is going to be caught past the 45 yard line. It's going to be brought down. Field midfield is able to hook up with number eight, Javon Robinson, for a solid game on that play. Another good, good job by the Tigers. Get the ball out quick. They're on the move here. They way through this third quarter. And our second and two coming up. 450 to go here in. The third quarter, if you look to the right for a folly, we will have to Williams. have nowhere to go. Great pursuit by the Panthers defensively on that play. Check that. That was actually four checks on that play, and that carry for the Tigers. Yeah, and, and the Tigers, they, they love to bounce it out to the outside. They'll get you like that speed, but great to catch you down by the Panthers. So a third down coming up, third and two for the Tigers. They're going to hand off two for a chart, and he will have enough for a Tigers first down. So the Tigers are now in Panther territory with a first set of down. All right, now spotted at the 43-yard line of the Panthers. As the Tigers are starting to slow things down, they come on with the hairy up offense. Uh, the early part of this argument. We're having majority momentum on this side. Both sides. I'm going to start the forward talk. Get past the 40-yard line. Brought down at the 
36 yard line. Now we're looking for three minutes, 42 seconds to go here. It's the third quarter. Yet another mental mistake by the Panthers. We talk about penalties being a, the theme of this entire ball game. Will the Panthers get another place call on that last play? That's going to put the Tigers well within Panthers territory. So all now spotted at the 23-yard line of the Panthers. So now Paul is going to have two seats to the right and one to the left. Another double jet sweep, and he will have plenty of room, but he will be brought down right at about the 20 yard line. The hole he was looking for was able to close up fairly quickly. Number 33 for the Panthers, Mr. Trevor Pearson, on that play. Pearson did a nice job. So the same double jet sweep, they were able to get 25 yards, two plays prior, nothing doing on that play, and we will have movement by the Tigers, false start, on the back of the five. So two penalties on this drive, one charging the Panthers, face mask, that was able to put the Tigers in Panthers territory, not a false start charging the Tigers, back in the five yards. Quick step to or it's a quick off of the to move the ball down. Oh, oh. The ball is a two to the right and to the left. One of that probably would be very tall for the Tigers. As we have a uh, out on the field, and we're going to take a time now. We're going to come back in more action right here, given my broadcast network. The third quarter. It is off for sure. Start this one at their own 25 yard line. We have 10 seconds to go. As the Tigers will likely just run a simple play to take us to the end of the third quarter. We mentioned during our pregame show that the table is set for an in state fair classic between these two squad Panthers. Coming in into this ball game, 2-0 in conference play. That's 1-0 in conference play. The table has been set, and so far we've had nothing but three fighting. As they're going to go with a handoff to change. They won't have enough time to run another play here at the end of the third quarter. So with that, our third quarter has come to an end here from the Cotton Bowl. And when the teams return, they'll flip side of the Tigers. We'll have a fresh set of downs at the 36-yard line. Andre uh, Davis here with you alongside Mr. Philip Prince. And again, we do apologize for our technical difficulties as we try to get things together here. As I mentioned before, we're dealing with technology. These things happen. And as they always say, the show must continue. And after that last huge run by Mr. Connor Weisham, the show will definitely continue here inside the Cotton Bowl. I mentioned during the pregame show that this might be, this game might come down to the wire. It just might come down to who has the ball last. 22 to 20 is our score in favor of the Tigers. The defense have been in the bend but don't break situation. Uh, that is the Panthers. 
However, the Tigers were able to cap off with a touchdown on their previous drive, and the Panthers were able to answer on their last previous drive. We'll see if the Tigers are going to answer again on their drive here when the teams make their way back onto the field. I want to take this opportunity to thank some of our sponsors for making today's broadcast possible, the Panther Packers, the Prairie View Athletic Club, and the Temple of Revenue Ministries. We want to thank you so much for your sponsorship and your contribute and your contributions to Give a Mic Broadcast Network. And speaking of contributions, one of my all of our listeners, if you have been thrilled with everything that we have coming to you here at Give a Mic Broadcast Network, then you can make a donation as well by heading to our website at obnradio.com. Again, that's obnradio.com. Make your simple donation today. I also want to remind all of our listeners that following the conclusion of this day, of this game, we will have the 1876 after party post game show. 15 minutes following the conclusion of this game, you can go to our website at obnradio.com or you can go to our YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. The 1876 After Party Post Game Show featuring yours truly, Dr. Mike Prince. He'll break down the X and O's, the ins and outs, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between in relation to today's ball game. And again, it's the 1876 After Party Post Game Show only on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Yeah, it's been a great contest. You know, great ball game by both sides. And uh, it's one of those things where like, you can't, can't beat just yet. You know, you can't run, run down to the game. You know, there's going to be a lot of ball games. Like, so we still got a whole quarter left. It's just it's all ball, ball, ball. So, look, I got excited on that last play by the Panthers. Connor Wysham just burst up through the middle for a 50 yard touchdown run. He breathes life into TV Nation. And you have to love what you're seeing so far here in this ball game. Absolutely, man. It's one of those things like you don't bend, you don't break, and you just got to keep going on. And since they were able to open it up, and like that, so we have a whole new ball game. Please have some size. And the Tigers will now be moving from left to right. Ball is spotted at their own 36 yard line, first and 10. In this one, 22 to 20, we have a nail biter on our hand. He was on each side of the cross. Yeah, of the Panthers, a huge game. As Crawley was able to hook up with. Number 10, Lyndon Crash, who had a touchdown reception on that previous drive for the Tigers. And Crawley was able to fit that one in double coverage on that play. Yeah, the first big play that Kirby has given up this game or it came into a crucial time, you know. On that play. Maybe we can tackle right there by. Talking about the Panthers, you know, we get that play, you can get any problem going right there. And he the Panthers was number 99, Calvin Presley, on that play. Carly was looking for a man downfield to find anybody to check the things for the running back, Chance Williams. Nothing doing. Twenty-seven. Years. Tigers moving from left to right. Play action fake, and he'll throw this one. The pass will be caught, and he's still on his feet. And he's finally going to be brought down well past the first down marker. Another huge gain, another first down for the Tigers. As Javon Robinson on that nice reception for the Tigers. Ball now spotted well inside the 20 yard line. The handoff to Chance Williams, and he's going to get this one. Inside the five-yard line, they're going to officially mark him at the four-yard line of the Panthers. Tigers on the move here as they are four yards away from Payton. Second and three coming up. Another hand off to Chance Williams as he has a wide-open hole, and he takes it in for a Tigers touchdown. 
And just like that, the Tigers are able to answer with a touchdown of their own by Mr. Chance Williams. And with that, we are looking at a 28-20 to 20 score here from the Cotton Bowl with 12.50 to go here in the fourth quarter. And now we are in the process of witnessing a boxing match between these two squads. A haymaker by the Panthers on the previous drive by Mr. Connor Wysham, and now an uppercut by the Tigers. On this last drive, 29 to 20 is now our score in favor of the Tigers. We have 12 people to go with here in the fourth quarter. And if anybody is out there and know anything about boxing, and it's a boxing match, it all comes down to not only are you able to throw blows, but how much are you able to take before you finally go in the foul? We have a lot of action to go here, a lot of football left to be played here in the fourth quarter. So far, the Tigers are not giving in, and they are showing just how bad they want this ball game. We want to take this opportunity to remind our about listeners that they can join us for next week's broadcast as the Panthers will return home to Blackshear Hill to take on Mississippi Valley State. Kickoff of that game is scheduled for 6 p.m. and we'll be coming at you with our pregame show at 5.30 Central Standard Time, and it's only on the Open Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. Teams haven't made their way back onto the field just yet. We also let our listeners know that you can become a season power supporter for the Panther Athletics. By making a donation of just eighteen dollars and seventy-six cents, again, that's eighteen dollars and seventy-six cents. This will help cover our season expenses, and you can do so by visiting our website at obnradio.com. Again, that's obnradio.com, and get your season pass today. Or you can simply send your season pass donation to the PO box at PO Box eight nine one, Fairview, Texas. Seven seven four four six. Again, as we mentioned in our pregame show, if you're out there and you're wondering, well, why eighteen dollars and seventy six cents? Well, eighteen seventy six is the year that our beloved Prairie End of University was founded. So therefore, we are asking for eighteen dollars and seventy six cents. Be sure to listen to the Mike Prince Show daily by subscribing to our YouTube channel at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. The Mike Prince Show covering the world of HBCU sports and beyond. And again, it's only on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Teams are slowly making their way onto the field. Tiger's going to be keeping this one from left to right. Brian Jenkins and Kyle Weisham back to receive this for the Panthers. Standing at their own. 10-yard line. We're going to see if the Panthers can capitalize on their next drive. As the Tigers were able to answer with a touchdown of their own by Mr. Chance Williams on their last drive. And the Tigers are going to still kick this one. And Washam filled this one at the 20-yard line. He's not going to have anywhere to go. And he's going to set up shop at their own 22-yard line, moving from right to left. We have 12.44 to go here in the fourth quarter. 29-20 is our score in favor of the Panthers. Trayvon Conley comes onto the field to lead the Panthers to start this drive. This time, Amon Antoine will be the running back to accompany the Panthers. He's going to be offset to Conley's left. Conley's going to have three receivers to the left and one to the right. Conley, back to pass. He's being pressured. Steps to the pocket. He has a man. Downfield pass is caught by Jaquan Bloomfield, and he's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line of the Tigers. Jaquan Bloomfield standing downfield.
backfield through the air to get the Panthers in Tiger ter- territory, a much needed play for the Panthers, but they are looking at third down here on this drive. All spotted at the 30-yard line of the Tigers. Third and seven, coming. Back to pass, he steps to the pocket. Great protection. He doesn't have a man downfield. He'll just have to take it himself, and he's going to be brought down near the first down marker. It appears that he may be about an inch shy of the first down, fourth down coming up. As we have an injured Tiger on the field. Can't quite make out the jersey number of the injured Tiger. It appears to be number 95, Mr. Javon Carter. When the teams return, we will have fourth and short coming up for the Panthers. Ball is spotted at the 25-yard line. So it's going to be interesting to see what head coach Bob McDowell calls Dow's up here on this next play. You're down by nine, 29 to 20 is our score in favor of the Tigers. We have 10 48 to go here in the fourth quarter. Four from one for the Panthers when the teams make their way onto the field. As Trayvon Conley was trying to hook up with Jaquan Bloomfield on that last play, but he was tightly covered. Trayvon Conley just had to take him himself because he wasn't able to get enough for a first down on that last play. We're going to let our listeners know that we want to hear from you. You can always leave your questions and thoughts and comments and concerns on our 24 hour message line, 720 The number again is 720-721-1558. Let us know your thoughts, your concerns, your comments on our 24 hour message line. If you're just now joining us, again, nothing but excitement. Here in this ball game, 29 to 20 is our score in favor of the Tigers. It's been a back and forth so far here in this third quarter. Both teams have been able to answer so far in this third quarter. We'll see if the Panthers can do just that. While the teams make their way onto the field, we're going to read off some scores. We brought the top voice now that a comment. That was our man, no, they can take care of business today against the Fiji by the score of 58 to 3. Texas Southern had no problem against Lincoln, winning by the score of 52 to 7. And Southern was victorious against Arkansas Pine Bluff by the score of 27 to 0. All four states took care of business against Alabama State by the score of 23 to 20. And for the AM, Able to handle Mississippi Valley today by the score of 31 to 7. Grambling on top of this one by the score of 8 to go here. Again, both teams have vision of the South. The Panthers. 2-0 in the Southwest Athletic Conference. It was victorious in the Labor Day Classic against Texas Southern, and they were able to take care of business last week against All Point State due to a 46-yard field goal walk-up by Mr. Carlos Villa Gomez. And the teams have made their way back onto the field, and the Panthers will go for it on fourth down and hand off to Ahmad Antoine. It appears that he may have been stopped short of the first down marker. And we're going to see where they're going to spot this. As we have a timeout on the field, it appears that they may try to measure this. As we don't have any indication as to whether or not he got the first down. And he will stop right at the first down marker. 
the Panthers had to go aggressively on that play. They went with a run to Ahmad Antoine. It appeared that the Tigers were anticipating the run, and they were able to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. As the chain crew is making their way onto the field to measure out this ball, it appears that Ahmad Antoine will be short of the first down, so a turnover on down for the Tigers will have their offensive possession here to start this next drive in the fourth quarter. Ball is going to be spotted at the 25-yard line. So the Panthers had to go aggressively on that last play. They went with a run to Ahmad Antoine. This is now, that was now their second time going forward on fourth down here in this ball game. Went forward on fourth down early in the third quarter, and then they went forward on fourth down here on that last play. Wasn't able to get it, so they're 0 for 2 on fourth downs here in this ball game. And with that, the Tigers would have a first set of downs ball at the 25 yard line. Two receivers up on each side for Crawley. As he hands it off to Chance Williams, and he changes directions, now runs to the right side, goes out of bounds, and he's going to be brought down at the 32-yard line. So Chance Williams made more than something out of nothing on that play. It appears that he's going to be stopped in the backfield, but he changed his direction at the last minute. And they're able to pick up nine yards on that place. So second and one coming up for the Tigers. Two receivers to the left and one to the right for Crawley. And Bart's going to throw this to the left side. But the Panthers were waiting for it. Nothing doing on that play. Keyshawn Johnson and company on the stop for the Panthers. So with that, we have third down coming up. So defensively, the Panthers have been able to throw third down quite often in this ball game. We'll see if the defense can tighten up here on third down and give the offense another opportunity here midway through the fourth quarter as we have nine very to go and count. Third and three. Another handoff to Chance Williams, but the play will be stopped as we have a flag on the play. As the flag came from the back, Judge. And we have a false start charge against the offense. It's going to back them up five yards. So we now have third and eight for the Tigers. So instead of third and three, we're looking at third and eight. Ball now started at the 27 yard line. Two receivers on each side. Cedric Anderson. On an interception for the Tigers. Trayvon Conley was trying to hook up with Jaquan Bloomfield. It was one on one coverage. Cedric Anderson, great break on the ball for Cedric Anderson. Come down with it. Conley's first turnover here in today's ball game, and it comes at a very costly time here midway through the fourth quarter. The Tigers offense will come back onto the field as they're going to have a fresh set of downs at their own 23-yard line moving from left to right. As Carl is going to have a man, the pass will be caught on the near side of the field. He was able to hook up with Lyndon Brash and that nice reception. Lyndon Brash has been Miles Carly's go-to guy offensively here in the second half. Had a touchdown reception towards the end of the second quarter. So far, he has been the man for Miles Crawley offensively here in the second half. Second and five coming up. As we do have a flag on the play, another false start charge against the Tigers gonna back him up five yards. They're going to repeat second down. So we talked at the beginning of our broadcast about penalties being the theme of this entire ball game. And as I mentioned before, 
really hard to say, even though the Panthers are trailing this one by nine, and we have 7.30 and counting to go here in the fourth quarter, it's really hard to say that the penalties have been one-sided throughout the course of this ball game. One thing we can really talk about is the fact that the penalties have been shared equally on both sides throughout the course of this ball game. And they're going to hand this off to Chance Williams. Got a lot doing on that play. Third down coming up. So the Panthers find themselves in no third down situation. They were able to get off the field on the previous drive. We'll see if the Panthers can get off the field on this next drive. Offensively, weren't able to get things done. Trayvon Conley, with his first turnover in today's ball game, trying to pick up with Jaquan Bloomfield. We'll see if the defense can give Trayvon Conley and company another opportunity here in the fourth quarter. Third and eight. Carly. Pass the other man. And that pass will be caught near the first down marker. It appears that he will have just enough for a Tigers first down. Wow. Number 11, LaShawn Dickerson on that nice reception for the Tigers. He was double covered, but he was able to remain focused and haul that one in here on the near side of the field. With that, we'll have a first set of downs for the Tigers. Another handoff to the running back. Chance Williams is able to pick up solid yards on the play. And check that. That was actually number 23, Keylon Elder, on the carry for the Tigers. Tigers trying to move quickly here at second and five. Play action phase. If he throws this one, he has a man on the far side of the field, and that pass will be caught as he goes out of bounds. He will have enough for another Tigers first down. So the Tigers are moving at will here on this drive. And it appears that the Panthers defense may be a bit gas. They were able to get off the field on the previous drive. The offense were not able to give them enough time to catch their breath. <laughs> and they had to come back onto the field. And the Tigers are on the move offensively. Hand off to the running back. He will be stopped at the line of scrimmage near midfield. The gain of about a yard on the play. We have five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Uh, the Tigers are controlling everything on this drive including the clock as they're just milking this one away. Two receivers to the right and one to the left for Crawley. As the Tigers are just taking their time, we do have a stoppage on the field. As they're discussing things right now, and there's no penalty for delay a game. As the play will resume, we'll have second and nine for the Tigers. Another handoff to the running back. He will burst up in the middle, picks up about five yards on the play. We have another third down coming up for the Tigers, third and five to be exact. Ball is to be spotted at the 45-yard line of the Panthers. Four minutes to go here in the fourth quarter, and counting 29-20 is a score. As the Tigers are trying to milk as much time off the clock as they possibly can. Another handoff to the running back, and he's going to break a few tackles in the backfield, and he finally will be brought down. It will be short of the first down marker. Number 23, Keylon Elder on the carry for the Tigers. Fourth down coming up, fourth and one to be exact. And we'll see what the Tigers do here offensively. And it appears that the offense of the Tigers will remain on the field here on fourth down. 
And if the Panthers want to try to sustain any level of hope, they're going to have to get off the field here on fourth down, but it appears that Elder will lower his shoulders, and he will have more than enough for a Panthers first down. And with that, the clock does continue to move here late in the fourth quarter with three minutes to go. We do have a stoppage in the play. It appears that we do have a flag on the play as the flag was thrown after the play concluded. So it appears that there were two flags on the play, both charged against either team, both teams, on sportsmanlike conduct charged against the Panthers and the Tigers. So those two penalties will offset, and the Tigers will have first down, ball placed at their own 40-yard line. He's going to have two receivers to the right and one to the left. Elder's going to be offset to his left. As Crawley sends a man in motion, another handoff to Elder. And he's time he's not going to have anywhere to go as he was brought down near the line of scrimmage on that play. Jamal Marshall on the stop for the Panthers. It appears that the Prairie View takes a timeout here. Their second timeout here of this second half. So when the teams return, we're going to have 2.43 to go here in this fourth quarter. 29-20 to is our score in favor of the Tigers. The Tigers have been moving at will here on this drop. So far, the Panthers' defense have been in the bend-but-don't-break situation. They've had several opportunities to get off the field here on this drive. It appears that they may be a bit gassed. You want to remind all of our listeners that following the conclusion of this ball game, you can join us for the 1876 After Party postgame show featuring yours truly, Dr. Mike Prince. We will be breaking down the X and O's and ins and outs of this entire ball game. And you can do so by going to our website at OBNRadio. Dot com, or you can visit our YouTube page at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, and it is the 1876 After Party Post Game Show, only on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. We want to thank our sponsors and supporters for making today's broadcast possible. The Prairie View Athletic Club, proudly serving student-athletes since 1986. For more information on how to become a member, you can dial 936 857 Five eight one seven. Again, that's nine three six eight five seven five eight one seven. The answer, Mr. Greg Austin, the Pantherbackers, serving student athletes since nineteen ninety five. And for more information on how to become a member, contact Dino Robinson at seven one three four one seven two zero nine zero. And the Temple of Refuge Ministry that you can listen live each and every Sunday morning at ten a.m. Central Standard Time by dialing eight five seven. Seven 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 zero 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 zero. Again, it's eight five seven 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 zero 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 zero. The Temple of Refuge Ministries, building the kingdom one soul at a time. And we want to take this opportunity to let all of our listeners know that you can become a season pass supporter for Panther Athletics by making a simple donation of just $18.76. I'm going to repeat that again. It's $18.76. This will help cover our season expenses, our large expenses, as we continue to bring you live and delayed sports coverages right here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network. You can do so by visiting our website at obnradio.com and get your season pass today. But you can also send your season pass donation to the P.O. Box at 819 Prairie View, Texas, 77446. So what appears to have been a nail-biter or what what we were anticipating to be a nail-biter here to start the fourth quarter, the Grambling State Tigers have put their foot on the gas here late in the fourth quarter and they have not let up as teams have made their way back onto the field. Ball is going to be spotted at the 38-yard line, second and nine for the Tigers. 
as a handoff to Chance Williams, and he's going to leap over a defender, and he's going to be brought down after gaining the solid yards on that play. We do have third down coming up. And check that. That was actually Floyd Chalk on that carry for the Tigers. Third and three. Two receivers to the right and one to the left for Carly. 2-12 to go here in the fourth quarter. As Carly is going to attempt to pass downfield, and that pass will be incomplete, broken up. As number 33, Mr. Trevor Pearson on that solid coverage for the Panthers, the Tigers. Attempted to pass downfield in the end zone on that last play. So with that, we have fourth down coming up. Appears that the offense will remain on the field here for this fourth down. They were successful on their previous fourth down. It was fourth and one. They handed it off to the running back, Mr. Floyd Chalk, and he was able to pick up enough yards for the first, for the first down. And they will have fourth and three. Ball spotted at the 33-yard line. We have some movement on the front line. Should be false start charge against the Tigers. We'll wait to get the call as Miles Crawley is barking at the head official. I don't see an additional flag on that play. Guess they'll let that one go. <laughs> so it was false start charging against the Tigers. And I mean, he was just barking at the at the official as if they're not up by nine right now. <laughs> so either way, that false start will back up the Tigers five yards. So instead of going forward on fourth down, now the punting unit is onto the field to punt this one off. Brian Jenkins standing at the 10-yard line of the Panthers. As right, so we have some substitutions, for the Panthers punting unit. As we have more substitution, you got to hurry up and get off the field. As we have another stoppage in the play, the Panthers had to burn another timeout here as there was some miscommunication with the substitutions for the Panthers. They had to burn a timeout to avoid a penalty of having too many men on the field. Wow. And with 2.04, and with 2.04 to go here in the fourth quarter, you're down by nine. How useful that timeout would have been as your offense gets an opportunity to get the ball back here with 2.09 to go here in the fourth quarter. And the situations like that that have become costly for the Panthers here in this ball game. We talked about the penalties for each squad here in this ball game. Panthers had several opportunities to really take charge of this ball game, but the Tigers have shown their resiliency here in this ball game, and they're leading the way here by the score of 29 to 20. If you just joined us, I want to remind all of our listeners that you can join us next week on our broadcast coverage as the Panthers will return home to Blackshear Field to take Mississippi Valley State. Kick off of that game is scheduled for 6 p.m. and we'll be coming to you with our pregame show at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And again, it's only you on the Open Money Broadcast Network, the station designed with you in mind. And when the teams make their way onto the field, it will be fourth down for the, ti- for the Tigers. The Tigers are going to punt this one off, and the Panthers will have an opportunity on this drive. They have to burn their last timeout here in this second half. They have 2 or 4 to go here in the fourth quarter, but it is a two-possession ball game. So in order to give yourselves an opportunity, the Panthers are going to have to go as quickly as possible without burning too much time off the clock. So therefore, you find yourself in a situation where you're going to have to use the sidelines 
catch the ball, get out of bounds as much as possible. You're going to have to nearly drive the length of the field as quickly as possible without burning too much time because you don't have any more timeouts to spare as you had to use your last timeout on that last play. Teams make their way onto the field. Brian Jenkins is standing at the 10-yard line for the Panthers. The Panthers are going to be uh, catching, moving this one from right to left. Panthers were showing some life at the beginning of the fourth quarter, but it's been all Tiger football so far here in this second half. As Brian Jenkins is going to fair catch this one, and the ball is officially going to be spotted at the 13-yard line. And that's where the Panthers are going to set up shop here late in the fourth quarter. 1.57 to go. The Panthers are two possessions. He's going to have three receivers to the right and one to the left. Ahmad Antoine is going to be the running back to a company. He's going to be offset to his right. Conley, back to pass. He has time. He has a man. That pass will be caught. Was not able to get out in bounds. He was able to check it down to Ahmad Antoine. Picks up about four yards on the play. Clock is team to run. The Panthers go quickly. That time he's got three receivers to the left and one to the right. Second and six coming up. This time they're going to hand off to Ahmad Antoine. He gains about a yard on the play. Interesting call on second down to go with a run as the clock continues to move with 1.45 to go. Ahmad Antoine only able to pick up two yards on that last play, so we'll have third down coming up, third and four. It appears that we have some more stoppage in the play. The officials are huddled up. Yes, sir. So they're warning the clock to be reset to 131. And the Panthers will have third down and four coming up. Ball is spotted at the 19-yard line. Three receivers to the left and one to the right. Back to pass. He's been pressured. He's flushed out the pocket, and he will be met in the backfield for a sack. And that will likely do it. Number 19, Keyshawn Johnson for the Tigers comes through with a sack on that play. So the Tigers have a Keyshawn Johnson of their own. And he comes up big for the Tigers with a sack on that last play. And fourth down coming up. And likely the last play for the Panthers if they're not able to convert. And they won't be able to as Conley comes away, comes down with a sack yet again on that play. Turnover on downs. And with that, that will do it here from the Cotton Bowl as the teams will switch sides as the Tigers will likely take a knee here to end this ball game. So the Panthers came in in today's contest winning this particular matchup against the Tigers for the last five seasons. It appears that the Grambling State Tigers will end that five-year streak with a victory here in today's ball game. So with the way that things are shaped up in the Western Division of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, now things are going to start to get very, very interesting. As we mentioned in our pregame show, the Panthers were victorious against Alcorn State last week by the score of 34 to 30. Or check that 23 to 20. As instead of taking a knee, it appears that the Tigers are going to put an exclamation mark on this ball game by running it in for another touchdown. Wow. <laughs> I mean, talk about kicking a man when he's down. <laughs> so instead of now the ball was spotted. Now the ball was placed at the three-yard line, but instead of taking a knee 
to just end this, the Tigers decide to run it in for another touchdown to run up the score here in this ball game with 39 seconds to go. It appears that the kick is no good, so 35 to 20 will remain our score in favor of the Tigers. I mean, just talk about an insult to injury. <laughs> so it appears that the Tigers want the Panthers to feel it as much as possible, and they are doing just that. But as I mentioned before, before I witnessed that additional touchdown by the Tigers, things are now going to shape up, interestingly, in the Western Division of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. As I mentioned before, the Panthers were victorious against Alcorn State last week by the score of 23-20. to 20. They will likely lose this ball game against uh, Grambling State by the score of 35-20. to 20. Now, the Grambling State Tigers will be taking on Alcorn State next week while the Panthers are taking on Mississippi Valley. And if Grambling does not pull off a victory next week against Alcorn State, things are going to be looking very, very interesting in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Even though the uh, Panthers will not win this ball game, does not mean you are completely out of it. Now you just are not in a situation to control your own destiny, and that's a situation that the Panthers will put themselves in by not being victorious in today's ball game. We talked about this before this broadcast started. You want to always put yourself in the opportunity to control your own destiny. You don't want to be in a situation where you have to not only win out, but you have to also rely on somebody else to either win or lose to, to keep your season hopes alive. And that's essentially what the Panthers have now put themselves in by not being victorious in this ball game. But either way, that's why they always say you can only worry about the team that's in front of you. And you cannot continue to look ahead of the schedule. And speaking of ahead of the schedule, as I mentioned before, the Panthers will return home next week to take on Mississippi Valley State. Kick off of that game is scheduled for 6 p.m. And of course, we'll be coming at you with our pregame show at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on the Open Money Broadcast Network. As the Panthers will have likely their last possession here of this ball game, Trazon Conley it's going to roll out the pocket. He'll safely slide down past the 15-yard line. As the clock continues to roll here with 18 seconds to go, and it appears that that will likely be the last play here in today's ball game. As they're going to do just that, they're going to let this clock run out. And with that, our game has concluded here from the 98th Annual State Fair Classic, Grambling State Tigers were able to break a five-year losing streak by being victorious in this one by the score of 35 to 20. I want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for making today's broadcast possible. The Prairie View Athletic Club, the Panther Backers, and the Temple of Refuge Ministries. We want to thank you for making today's broadcast possible. And again, as I mentioned before, 15 minutes following this game, 1876 After Party Post Game Show, we, you can listen to on our YouTube page at the Open Mic Broadcast Network featuring yours truly, Mr. Mike Prince, breaking down the ins and outs, the good, the bad, lots of ugly. And I'm sure he'll point out here in today's ball game. Grandma State Tigers, victorious in this one by the score of 35 to 20. For Mr. Philip Prince, I am Andre Davis. I want to thank you all for joining us and sticking with us throughout the course of our broadcast. You all have a great night, and we will see you next time.